This is a $163 million Superdome. As today, the New Orleans Saints, with a 2-7 and seven record, play host of the surprising Atlanta Falcons, who come into today's game with a 5-4 and four record. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Vender, and alongside me, Mr. Quarterback John Unitas. John, before the day is over, the Atlanta Falcons could be tied for first place in the Western Division. Possibly, but first they have to get by the Saints, Gary. Let's take a look at the standings. Los Angeles six and three, Atlanta five and four, San Francisco four and five. If Atlanta beats the Saints and San Francisco beats Los Angeles, they will be a tie in this division. Well, the Atlanta Falcons have been winning with their defense. They've allowed only 62 points, and it's going to be tough for New Orleans. It'll be tough. Bobby Douglas has that job this afternoon. Not noted as a, a real good passer. He is an outstanding runner. In 1972, 968 yards to set a record for rushing for a quarterback, Harry. Well, on the other hand, should he not get the job done, Archie Manning, we understand, is available. Hank Stram said last night that if we get into a passing contest, we will have to put the Archie Manning in. All right, the game is underway. The kick now to the New Orleans Saints. They bring it up to the 25-yard line. The Saints with a 2-7 and seven record. Last year winning here against the Atlanta Falcons, 30 to nothing, losing in Atlanta, so they have split. A return out to the 25-yard line. The Saints, who have had a tough time moving their offense now due to the injuries to quarterbacks. There's Marv Montgomery, who's doing an excellent job in the estimation of Hank Stram. John Gilliam, you're going to see a lot of him today at that wide receiver spot. They expect to throw to him a lot, and Douglas has thunder and lightning behind him. Muncie and Galbraith from the 25-yard line. First down, the Saints. In motion comes Don Herman. Douglas giving off to Galbraith, and Tony Galbraith goes for five yards to the 30-yard line. Greg Brazina making the stop along with Ralph Ortega. So at the 30-yard line, it's going to bring up second down and five yards to go. Defensively, 31 sacks by this front four of Atlanta, led by Miro. Pennywell replacing Kuykendall. What a job he's done at the linebacking core. The secondary has a change. Tom Moriarty replacing Ray Brown, who has a boil on his knee. And that was a last-second change by Coach Lehman Bennett. Second down, five from the 30. Bobby Douglas off to Chuck Muncie. Muncie goes for maybe a yard, and that's all, as he's dropped at the 31, and it's going to bring up a third down. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcaster of the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the New Orleans Saints in the National Football League is prohibited. All right, third down now, and still three yards to go for the Saints. Bobby Douglas last week threw only seven passes. That was a record low for the Saints, completing three of them. And he's going to throw now. He dumps it off to Galbraith. Galbraith is 30th catch of the year, but he's going to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. So it brings up a fourth down for the Saints. And John Unitas, we have today two of the finest punters in the game. Tom Blanchard first in the NFC and John James the second. And now Blanchard gets his first crack. And talking to uh, Lehman Bennett last evening, uh, Gary, he mentioned the fact that he's going to try to control the football. His defense is playing so well, and if they get up, come up with a third down and or fourth down punting situation, then he's going to kick it. And he has an awful lot of confidence in his kicker, as does Hank Stram right here. Blanchard a 42-1 average, and he hits a boomer. This is Rollin Lawrence. He's got it at the 18-yard line. Lawrence, a big playmaker, and he is collared to the 29-yard line. Rollin Lawrence with five interceptions this year, three of which have been called back due to penalties. And at the 29-yard line, Motti made the stop for the New Orleans Saints. Now let's check that offensive forward wall. Warren Bryant, the number one draft pick. He is going to be a super football player. Philman, an excellent player. Lehman Bennett said he's a very intelligent football player. We have a man shaken up by the way at the 35-yard line. Alfred Jenkins and Wallace Francis and then Jim Mitchell, who's had some knee problems, but he's at 100% today after not catching a pass last week for Atlanta. That last punt, by the way, by Blanchard was 52 yards, and now a penalty, and Gene Barth, their official, is going to explain it. Number 59, unnecessary roughness on the run back. First down. 59 is Pennywell for the Atlanta Falcons. And so they're going to start inside their own 15-yard line. And already, John, you can see what punting can do for you. 52-yard kick by Blanchard. And Lehman Bennett told us last night it is a game of field position. It has been with the Atlanta Falcons all year long. Their defense playing tremendous football and keeping this Atlanta team in the ball game. Uh, as note, last week against San Francisco, 
when they, uh, or rather Detroit, when they scored two touchdowns in the last part of the late part of the ball game, defensive touchdowns to put them ahead for good. The man that's shaken up is Craig Cassidy, who's being helped off the field. He's had some injury problems. He had a broken arm last year, kept him out all the season, had bruised ribs, and now he's being helped off the field with a leg injury. He's a former standout at Ohio State. There he is, the son of Hopalong Cassidy, the former Heisman Trophy winner at Ohio State. So the personal foul has moved the ball inside the 15. The Falcons with their first crack of the ball. Markowski, the quarterback. Markowski off to Haskell Standback, and Standback, the leading rusher for the Falcons, brings it out to the 19-yard line. Wilson Fomwina, the rookie from San Jose State, over to make the stop for the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons this year defensively have just been amazing. Eight of the nine opponents this year, they've limited to one touchdown or less, only two touchdowns rushing. Here is that Saints defensive picture. Merlo, Fettersfield, and Hughes getting his second straight start in place of Greg Westbrooks, who has a leg injury. Second down now, six yards to go. Bartkowski, this is Wallace Francis. And Francis looks like he has the first down. Francis across the 25, just outside it, and that will be enough for the first down. Wallace Francis with his 17th catch of the year, the former Buffalo Bills standout. Now, Steve Bartkowski with his third straight start, and John, a lot of people feel he's getting some of the rust out. He's getting back to where he was in the preseason. Well, Coach uh, Bennett cons uh, considers him still a rookie, uh, Gary. He's still making some uh, rookie mistakes out there. Uh, Burkowski's record as a starting quarterback, quarterback is just five wins up and 17 losses, so not very good. First down now, just across the 25-yard line. In motion is Francis. Barkowski giving off and has to stand back. Comes across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Stand back, tripped up by Jim Merlo. Standback has 503 yards coming in here. Nothing real big. The, the offensive line does a good job right here. As you see, Standback cutting back. They, they move into uh, New Orleans Saints off of the line of scrimmage. And if anything's been a problem with the Saints, it's been their defense. People have been able to maintain control of the ball and blow that defensive line right off of it. Pick up of six by Standback. The Saints defense has been a mystery thus far to Coach Hank Stram. They're 14th in every category in the NFC. Here comes Standback again, but Merlo is there. Jim Merlo, who last year in a game picked off a pass and went 83 yards for a touchdown against Atlanta. There he is, a former Stanford standout in his fourth year, 6-1, a 220-pounder. He has an interception this year for a touchdown, 57 yards against Chicago. So it's going to bring up third down and still five yards to go for Atlanta. Atlanta has not scored a touchdown in the last ten quarters. They have been living and dying with that brilliant defense. Artkowski on third and five. A big rush put on by Fettersfield. Joe Fettersfield sacks him back at the 20-yard line, and that's only the 20th sack of the year for this New Orleans team. Let's look at it again, John. He came through untouched. Joe Fettersfield right there on a block. Someone, the fullback missed a block on Fettersfield. Dove at him. Fettersfield maintaining uh, his footing in on Burkowski for the sack. If I'm going to say, Gary, if, if the uh, Saints have a real strength in defense, it's at the linebacker's position. They've been tremendous all year round. Fettersfield and used uh, doing real, real great job for the linebacking crew of the Saints. He's only missed one game in six years. And kicking is John James. He is second, and he and Blanchard are really kicking the ball. This is Motti, the rookie from Penn State. He breaks the tackle. Rich Motti, though, is in trouble. And he's going to be dropped at the 31-yard line. Coming up, Ron McCartney to make the stop. A 45-yard kick that time by James. Timeout, no score from the Superdome. Introducing the Ford in your future, the new Ford Fairmont. A new car designed for today and the years ahead. At 33 miles per gallon highway, 23 city, Fairmont has the highest mileage ratings in its class. Yet it has 90% of the head, leg, and shoulder room of most large cars. And base sticker prices for the Fairmont line start at just $35.89. Fairmont, roomy but with mileage like a small car. And the lowest sticker price in its class. Test drive Fairmont. The newest, better idea from Ford. When you're looking for tires that put teeth in winter driving, drop in on the Snowbiters at Firestone. Look at them, two sets of deep biting teeth that really gobble up snow, but they don't take a bite out of you. 
Right now, a polyester cord snow biter is just $20 plus federal excise tax. And you can charge them. For quiet running, long mileage, and plenty of traction, Firestone Town and Country Snow Biters. And now the New Orleans Saints with the ball to 31. Cleveland, 5-4, and four, John. They can ill afford to lose that one. Now we see it. Cleveland 7, New York Giants 7 in the second period. Jerry Goldstein has thrown a touchdown pass for the New York Giants in that game. First down now from the 31-yard line. Bobby Douglas on first down, complete to Gilliam. John Gilliam with his ninth catch of the air across the 36. And that's what we expected, John, is they're going to throw a lot to number 41. Well, that's a quick out to uh, Gilliam that time. And these are tight passes that you have to, should be throwing on a first down situation. These passes, like the quick out the, to the outside, a diagonal to the tight end, quick out both to the, to the flanker and the out end, are good first down passes because they come up with a second and six or second and five situation. And they give you that uh, the momentum moving the football down the field. See Cincinnati leading Miami. Miami with that brilliant 7-2 record. Here's a give now to Chuck Muncie on second and five, and he's very close to that first down. Chuck Muncie, a world of talent, coming in here seventh in the NFC and rushing with 543 yards, tackled by Ray Easternly, and it looks like they're just going to be short of that first down by less than a yard. Third down, let's make it a yard to go. If you look at the offensive team of New Orleans, Somewhat of a mystery this year. It's either, either been feast or famine with them. Three straight games, they scored an amazing number of points, 42, 31. But now they're having a tough time getting that offense rolling. Up the middle comes Galbraith, and he's got the first down. First down, New Orleans. Schumacher and John Hill throwing the key blocks that time up front for the Saints. The ball just short of the 45-yard line. Atlanta this year defensively has made it so tough in every phase. Only two touchdowns rushing against them. They can become the first team since 1944 to hold opposition under 100 points for a season. They just pursue you, gang tackle you, and everything. Knuckles on first down again to throw. He's going to run. And he gets out of bounds at the 49-yard line. And if anybody can run the football from that position, it's Bob Douglas. <laughs> he set that record, 1972, 968 yards. We mentioned his prowess is not as a passer, but primarily as a runner. It gives him two ways to go once he gets out there with the football. He can't throw the football well. In fact, this year he's throwing it at a better percentage per completion than any time since he come into the league. Right now he's throwing it 54% completion. So he can't throw it, Gary, and he can't have a hot day. The Atlanta Falcons could be in trouble. Well, he really drives your pass rush crazy, that outside containment. He picked up three yards on that play, second and seven from the 48. This is Muncie. Look at the move outside by Muncie. Boy, has he got quickness. Muncie across the midfield, striped to the 49. Coming up to make the stop was Ray Brown. And, you know, we didn't expect to see a lot of this guy because he was hurt. Three-yard pickup on the play. Inside now to the Atlanta 49-yard line. The New Orleans Saints, behind first Archie Manning, defeated Chicago. Then they came on with Bobby Scott. Scott directing a win over Los Angeles and playing very well against St. Louis. And now it's been Douglas. And they've scored only two touchdowns in the last two games. Third down, and still three yards to go. Douglas to Galbraith, first down. Ray Brown hit him again. Boy, Ray Brown playing the boil on the knee has made two tackles in succession. Bobby Douglas going back, setting up good protection right here. You see the little throw to Galbraith coming out of the backfield. Linebacker dropping off. Ray Brown coming up to make the tackle. 70-yard pickup, John. Galbraith, an outstanding receiver. Good hands and very, very good quicknesses. And I think he's learning quite a bit, Gary, about pass defenses and where to go and how to find that open hole. Boy, he's not doing bad. He has 31 catches this year. He had 54 last year. First down for New Orleans. This is Muncie. Boy, he's going nowhere. Claude Humphrey was over there. Also, Rollin Lawrence, but Humphrey just stacked that play up all the way. Lost clear back out to the 45-yard line. That's one of New Orleans' favorite plays is that quick pitch to Muncie and get those lead blockers ahead. There's Fomwina coming in along with Dewey McLean as on a long passing situation or long yardage, they bring Fomwina in as he is excellent at the pass rush. He's going to bring up now second down, 13 yards to go. Gilliam to the bottom of the screen. Watch him. They're going to throw a lot to him today. Douglas is looking his way right now, and he throws instead to Childs. He can't hang on. 
Henry Childs, their fine tight end, who has 18 catches this year, could not hang on. It's going to ring up a third down. There he is. Boy, this guy had a 53-yard touchdown catch against St. Louis. He has played remarkably well. And Gary, that's the key to any good running football team is have that tight end who's able to block and also put the pressure on him when downfield on his, as a receiver. A good tight end who can block is worth his weight in gold. And you're seeing two of the best ones right here today in Childs and uh, Mitchell for the Atlanta Falcons. Third down, 13 from the 45 of Atlanta. Douglas again, and Childs doesn't see it. Childs trying to get down the field against strong safety. Ray Brown just didn't look back. What happened on that, John? Well, they had a blitz. Uh, Douglas saw the blitz coming up, a safety blitz, hoping that Childs could see it, too, and break the back to the inside. But uh, Childs was not watching. Bobby Douglas just threw the ball up in the air. At, uh, you know, it could have been an interception if uh, the defensive, uh, defensive man would have been watching, too. But two men not watching, not doing the job they're supposed to be doing. Here's Blanchard, the last time punted the ball 52 yards. Rollin Lawrence is deep for Atlanta. Good rush. It's blocked. It's blocked. Frank Reed blocked the ball. And at the 46-yard line, Atlanta comes up with it. Frank Reed, a second-year man from the University of Washington, a big play. Got in on Tom Blanchard, and the Falcons have it now at the 46-yard line of the Saints. They had three or four guys, John, that almost got to that one. Tremendous <laughs> pressure put on. Well, there wasn't, no one took anything out of anyone on the line of scrimmage, and the first thing you have to do is at least bump the man. And if you're not going to block, turn around and tell the punter, look out. Well, this is just indicative of how Atlanta's played defensively all year long. They now turn the ball over to their offensive core at the 46. We're going to be back at the 6.45 mark with no score here in the Superdome. Stuntman. You get the bruises instead of the glory. You hit the deck and bite the dust till your bones ache. Then you pick yourself up and do it again. Okay, cut! That's a wrap, everybody. Let's go, buddy. Why, am I dry? But now it comes Miller time. Time to wrap it up and reach for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life, America's quality beer since 1855. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. Miller tastes too good to hurry through. When it's time to relax, we've got the beer. Miller beer. With John Unitas, this is Gary Bender. We have six minutes and 45 seconds left to go. First quarter, Frank Reed has just blocked a Tom Blanchard punt, setting up the Atlanta offense at the New Orleans 46-yard line. This is Steve Bartkowski. Got his first start of the regular season of play three weeks ago. Play action fake. And it is intercepted by Ernie Jackson. Ernie Jackson picks it off. Barkowski was hit by Derlin Moore just as he released the ball, and Ernie Jackson, who's not a very big guy, 5'9", 176, comes up with it. Let's look at it here, Gary. His little play action fake to the fullback. You see Barkowski going back, throws the ball, plenty of time, right to Alfred Jenkins, and there's the ball, picked off, an outstanding catch by Ernie Jackson, number 30. The ball was intended for Jenkins, but the ball was just underthrown, just slightly, and Jackson there to pick it off. All right, looking ahead now, next Saturday the CBS Sports Spectacular. We're going to be having the LA Times 500 at the Ontario Motor Speedway. A.J. Foyt also countdown to Super Bowl and World's Strongest Man next Saturday at 4.30. Douglas back to throw on first down again. Gilliam! Ray Easterling stepped in at the 45-yard line. I think now, John, that's three straight first downs that Douglas has thrown the football. He's thrown the football, did not throw it well that time, and I'll tell you, had he had the ball up where it, where it belonged to be, it could have been intercepted. The only thing that kept it from being intercepted that it was low, and Easterling could not get his hand on it. There's the throw right there. Easterling did get a hand into it, but if it had been up high, it would have been uh, an interception for him. The general consensus around the league is that Ray Easterling is playing like an all-pro. 
Second down, 10 from the 25. Douglas. And running with a great deal of determination that time is Chuck Muncie, and Muncie brings it out to the 28-yard line. Dewey McLean and Greg Brazina making the stop. One thing about Galbraith and Muncie, they will fight you for every inch of the way. Big, strong backs. Outstanding backs. One thing about both backs, and any cut back like that, you notice when he's hit, he keeps that leg drive going. Both of these young men are big and able to take the punishment that they have to because really the, the offensive line has not been doing a job for them the greater part of this year. Third down and eight from the 28-yard line. Douglas again to throw. Child's intended receiver is picked off instead. Ray Brown's got it. Brown to the 25 and Ray Brown to the 23-yard line. Ray Brown to this third interception of the year. And Bobby Douglas being booed here. That is Douglas's third interception he's thrown this year. John, he just overthrew Henry Childs. That ball was thrown right in the middle, and uh, Brown standing right there just couldn't help but catch it. There, just take a look at him right there. As you see, as the ball was overthrown, Ray Brown standing back there makes the interception. Douglas just did not get the ball down into where he wanted to. So we've had two interceptions here in the early going. One by Jackson in New Orleans, and now one by Brown. 24-yard return on the play to the 23-yard line. Haskell stand back. Stand back to the 20. Brings up second down. I tell you, New Orleans has just had a tough time getting that offense rolling. But let's give credit to Atlanta. Nobody's been able to do much against them this year. They haven't. And they, they, if anything, they're going to have to throw the football. No one has really been able to move, them, move that line back off the line of scrimmage and running against them. Well, Lehman Bennett told us last night that you have to play first the run. And that's what they've been able to do. Second down now. Seven yards to go. Giving off this time to Woody Thompson, and Thompson's going to be thrown for a loss. Woody Thompson hit first by Lois Grooms, who, according to Hank Strass, playing about as well as anybody in that forward wall. He has five sacks coming into the game. A loss of four yards. Woody Thompson had 94 yards rushing two weeks ago against San Francisco. So it's going to bring up third down, 11 yards to go. I tell you, New Orleans last year had 39 sacks, a club record. They played well defensively, but this year just been a big mystery. They have that, in fact, they have the same men playing from the last two years on that defense, have not been able to get the job done so far. Third and 11. Arkowski to throw. Jenkins, and he is hit by Chapman in a play. A late flag as Clarence Chapman hit Alfred Jenkins before the ball arrived at the 15-yard line. At Jenkins, he's kind of a sneaky guy out there. Burkowski did a fine job getting that ball off because they had a blitz on Gary, and his offensive man, Chuck Chris, coming into the, uh, into the blitz. Let's watch Jenkins as he go down on a pattern, a quick look in, and there's the ball. You see, there he's getting hit right there. Good call by the official. Fast interference on Clarence Chapman. The yeah, automatic first down. I John. mentioned that Burkowski had a, uh, got the ball off very, very quickly because Chuck Chris coming in on a blitz was in on him. At the 16-yard line, first down, Atlanta. Markowski, play action. He's keeping the ball. Boy, he took a shot. And for his efforts, he picked up maybe two yards, and that's all, because Pat Hughes, the former New York Giant, who had 12 tackles last week, he just doesn't get fooled very often. Talking to uh, Coach Graham last night, saying that Pat Hughes has been doing a fine job in for Westbrooks. He's a real heady player and very, makes very few mistakes. He stayed home that time. Burkowski tried to fool him on the bootleg. It was not there. Had Burkowski enough time to look up, he did have a man in the end zone clean. Burkowski still playing to the knee brace, but moving pretty well on that play. Second down now. Nine yards to go. It's a stand back, and here comes Fettersfield. Joe Fettersfield, twice now, has gotten through. And I'll tell you, he must have known the play on that one. Well, we had a blitz on it, Gary. Let's watch it. Safety the man, Chris coming and Fettersfield coming. The guard was, or center was, guard was supposed to come over to get to Fettersfield, but there's no way he was going to do it. The center had to take either one, either, either safety or Fettersfield, and he chose Fettersfield. We have a flag on Chris the play, right. and also one of our officials was shaken up on the play. Fine play by the Saints on the blitz to get the, uh, to get 
the runner. And we see we have a penalty down. The official deciding what it's going to be. There it comes now. Gene Barth from St. Louis, the official for today's game. And he explains it to Hank Stram in his second year as the head man of the New Orleans Saints. That's Gene Barth, number 14. Vern Marshall, number 94, or 34, I guess it was, Fritz Graff, was the man shaken up. You can see him there. He got caught somewhere behind that line of scrimmage, and he was just buried back there. Well, if there's the officials, that if they want to get in the game, they better start wearing pads, Gary. Yeah. It's tough out there. By the way, down below, Archie Manning is warming up for the Saints. We may see him before this game is very old. We have three and a half minutes left. Let's listen now to Gene Bart. We have a dead ball foul. Both players disqualified. 73 defense, 86 offense. Third down, down counts. Third down. Well, 86 would be Jim Mitchell, and 73 would be Joe Campbell. 73, a defensive end for the Saints, the number one draft pick for Maryland. So they're wasting no time of getting people out of this game. Both of them have been ejected from the game. Third down now, 13. A blitz is on, a fumble. Oh, I tell you, Chuck Chris came up from his strong safety spot, and he was there almost the moment the ball was snapped. Very excellent timing by Chris on that blitz. Burkowski is going to have to change his tactics as far as his count is concerned to try to keep New Orleans off balance back there. They seem to be timing their, their uh, blitz on Burkowski's cadence. Well, a penalty, a flag on the play. Step off inside the 15-yard line. Let's listen. And two or three minutes. Four, defense, offside, third down. Well, Chris was offside on that blitz. How about that? Well, that's one way to stop it. <laughs> so Chuck Chris, who made the sack and caused all the misery in the backfield, was offside. So now it's third down and eight yards to go. Boy, the crowd really booing here in the Superdome. Arkowski to throw. Wallace Preston, defending on the play. Very well was Ernie Jackson, and Jackson getting up very slowly. He's had injury problems, and he's limping. So Barkowski on third down and eight doesn't get it, and we're going to have a field goal attempt coming up. And coming in is going to be Steinfurt, Fred Steinfurt, activated two weeks ago, replacing Nick Mickemeyer. He's hit two of three thus far. His longest of the year has been 34 yards. So this will be a 31-yarder. He's a left-footed soccer-style kicker. Started his career with Oakland. 31-yard attempt by Steinfurt. And it is good. Steinfurt hits it. And do you realize this is the first time Atlanta scored in the first quarter this season? Believe it or not, Atlanta with their first point of the first quarter in 77. Three to nothing, Atlanta. All across our land, people know our brain. You can trust AC. Thanks, AC. Spark plus my AC. We'll help you smile throughout the miles. You can trust AC. Thanks, AC. Spark plus my AC. So when you want to go, we're the name to know. You can trust AC. You know what makes my jeans feel soft and comfortable? It's right here on this label. 100% cotton denim. The Lee Company knows how important 100% cotton denim is to jeans. And now they make them with a special process. So they won't shrink or wrinkle. So they stay looking neat. You see this label? Make sure you see it on your jeans. When you're looking at blue jeans, check the label. Make sure you're looking at 100% cotton denim. Lucy welcomes some good old friends to a brand new one-hour special. You'll love Lucy, Monday at 8.30, 7.30 Central in Melbourne, right after Charlie Brown. For a wild, magical trip through the wicked delights of a fairy tale world, join us here Wednesday night for Once Upon a Brothers Grimm with Dean Jones and Paul Sand at 8, 7 Central, and Mountain Time.
Brad Steinford with a 31-yard field goal. There he is, former Boston College player. He's kicking off. Rich Motti is deep for New Orleans. Says the Falcons with a three to nothing lead. And Clarence Chapman's gonna let it go out of bounds and that'll be a five yard penalty. You know, already Bobby Douglas has thrown more passes in this game, John, than he did all of last week when he threw only seven. I think he's thrown his last pass. I see Hank Stram down there with his arm around Archie Manning and I believe Archie may be coming in. There's that last drive which was set up brilliantly on the interception by Ray Brown. Steinford with a 31-yard field goal, three of four for the year. And Atlanta, the way they've been playing defense, they don't have to score a lot of points. They've been something. There's Archie Manning. He's talking with uh, Coach Dick Wood right there, quarterback coach. I just see some serious consultation going on on us. Archie is coming in now, hadn't played for three or four weeks. I understand his foot is all right, and he's going to be coming in, as we mentioned earlier in a ball game that uh, Hank Stram said if we needed Archie, he would be in, and it didn't take him long to insert him. I tell you, Archie Manning played so well earlier this year, and then he hurt that ankle. And, John, sometimes you just can't come back from ankle sprains. They can really bother you. Here's time for tying it again. This time five yards deeper after the penalty. And now Chapman will bring it out. There Chapman gets to the outside. They're going to mark his forward progress at the 31. He stepped out of bounds at that point. And Steinford, who kicks off, was the guy that shoved him out of bounds. That'll be a 26-yard return on the kickoff. And from the 31-yard line, the Saints trailing 3 to nothing. Already, we've had a block punt and two interceptions. And we have three minutes and seven seconds to go in the first quarter, and here comes Archie Manning. Archie Manning who's hitting just about 53% of his passes. He has three touchdowns, three interceptions, 66 of 125. Against Chicago this year, he ran for three touchdowns and passed for one. Manning giving off to Galbraith, and Tony Galbraith gets close to five yards as he advances out to the 35-yard line. Mike Lewis made the stop. Archie Manning has only beaten the Falcons twice in eight starts. It'll be interesting to see how he attacks that defensive football team of the Atlanta Falcons. Well, you can see at the top of your screen a yellow flag. Another penalty. We had a lot of them here in the early going of this football game. Two players have been ejected, Joe Campbell and Jim Mitchell. A five-yard step off, moving the ball out to the 36. Let's listen. The flashing of the lights, that's all. Defense. Yeah, Al is... Uh... Well, I don't believe we picked that one up. From the 36-yard line, first down now, five yards to go. It was offside, however, against Atlanta. First and five, Gilliam. Look to the near side of the field. Archie Manning on a first and five. Has in motion now Don Herman. Gives off to Galbraith. Galbraith for two, maybe three yards. And he's finding what everybody else has found out this year. It's tough to run against this Falcon team. Lewis and Greg Brazina. Combining on the stop now for the Atlanta Falcons, we come to a second down. Also give credit to Pennywell, the middle linebacker. Here's a good look at the Falcon defense standing. They've done a tremendous job, as uh, you mentioned, Gary, all year long. They've really shot everyone just about off completely on the run, and most teams have tried to go through the air on them, but what they've had a tremendous rush on most in most ball games that they've played all year. Well, in the last two weeks, they've held opposition under 200 yards in total offense as Chuck Muncie trying to go for the first down, and he's got it. On a second down and four, Chuck Muncie picks it up. Ray Brown flying over to make the stop. John, I really enjoy watching Chuck Muncie. He really has some real flashiness about him. He's a big man, too. He, you know, instead of going around a lot of people, he likes to run over them occasionally. That time, Chuck saw a defender coming up. He just turned sideways, and a man uh, missed him. So the first down out to the 43-yard line. Chuck Muncie's had some injury problems. 6'3", 220, the number one draft pick last year. First down. Archie Manning got to try his first pass. And it's intended for Childs, and Childs is belted by Ray Brown. Another flag on the play at the 41-yard line. Manning went down that time. He was hit and hit hard. A good pressure put on by Jeff Miro. He's all right, though. We're going to have a personal foul against Atlanta. There's Manning. So that will give the New Orleans Saints another first down. 
They're going to move the ball inside the 45 to the 42-yard line. Oh, Personal foul, head slap, number 87 defense. First down. That's Claude Humphrey, the defensive left end. You cannot hit him in that helmet. Well, if he hits you, you know it, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, uh, Archie was hit, but I'm sure he's happy about being hit, Gary. He hasn't played for a while, and being hit the first time, that'll knock those butterflies out of you right away. So he'll be all right now. It'll remind you what you're doing anyway, huh? <laughs> right. Look at this one. If Chicago defeats Minnesota, that throws that Central Division up for grabs. And that means that big ball game coming up with Detroit on Thanksgiving will be a real big one in that division. Here's Chuck Muncie on the first down across the 40, and Muncie is close to the 35-yard line. Ray Easterling coming over from the free safety spot to make the stop. Also Pennywell again. Look at Chuck Muncie. Take a look at Muncie as he comes up uh, to get the ball from Archie Manning. Watch a good blocking out front of him right there. A fine block there as Muncie picks his hole. He picks up some good yardage. Ray Easterling, number 32, in on the tackle. He picked up six yards, and now he's seven for 19 for the day. The ball at the 36-yard line, second down, four. Manning giving off to Tony Galbert. Look at him. He's got another first down. Ray Brown made the stop, and right now the Saints are doing something nobody's been able to do, and that's run the football against the Atlanta defense. Remember, again, they've given up only two touchdowns rushing, and the first one they gave up was two weeks ago. you got to remember, too, Gary, that when teams are able to run against defenses like this, it's the offensive line that does the job on them. They're blowing the defense right off the ball so far. That's a nine-yard pickup by Galbraith. The fifth first down now for the Saints. In motion goes 87, Don Herman. There's a delay to Muncie. And Muncie just can't get wide as Ray Brown made a fine one-on-one -on -one stop. Ray Brown shows what kind of an open field tackler he is. I tell you, Muncie was just about one foot from getting outside him. Some, some real good uh, footwork by Muncie. Let's watch the blocking right there on the linebacker as he goes to the outside. Watch the footwork here by Muncie to get, try to get around Ray Brown. Almost does, but Ray Brown holds on with one hand, but one, one hand to bring Muncie down. All right, John, that's the end of the first quarter with the score. Atlanta three. New Orleans nothing. To good friends. Tonight well, kind of tomorrow we go back to civilization. And let's have a last night in the wilderness party. Introducing the new Remington XLR, the electric shaver that shaved as close as a blade. And to prove it, we're doing something spectacular. We're giving away a blade to compare it with. We guarantee the Remington XLR will shave you as close as a blade or your money back. Now that's really spectacular. A Remington XLR shaves as close as a blade for your money back. Sir, what's the hurry? Oh, going to rent a car. Oh, well, you don't have to run. Oh, gotta run. Oh no, if you had an Avis wizard number, you could walk. You gotta walk. Call toll free and let our wizard system do the running. Just show a major credit card, license, sign, and get the car. I don't have to run through airports? Not with Avis. I can walk through airports. We try high and Avis, Avis, we don't know another way. I'm walking through airports. This is God again. I just thought you'd like to know how my new movie, Oh God, starring George Burns and John Denver, turned out. I'm a big hit. Sacco, Buffo. Rave reviews and long lines at the box office. Who would have thought in 1977 God would be so big? I haven't heard that much praise since I parted the Red Sea. Oh God, from Warner Brothers, rated PG. Now playing. Well, coaches are always looking for agility, right, John? I'll tell you that, Gary, she has more moves than Muncie ever thought about having. Let's get with it, huh? <laughs> All right. Okay, we're going to start the second quarter of play here in the Superdome. Atlanta's leading three to nothing, but the Saints are on the move. They have a second down, virtually 10 yards to go now at the 27-yard line of Atlanta. Archie Manning has taken over, and he's moved the football team. Top of the screen is John Gilliam. Galbraith, Muncie, the running back. And there's a give to Tony Galbraith, and Galbraith just short of the 25-yard line. It was Pennywell again. Pennywell is from Shreveport, Louisiana. Went to Grambling, 
this young man walked out of the 49er camp. He was drafted in the sixth round and got a chance to play when Fulton Kuykendall was hurt. And there's the master, Hank Stram. Second year, the helm of the Saints. He's had a team that's just been somewhat of a mystery to him. But it has got to be a tremendous lift to the offensive football team to have the Archie Manning coming back to play quarterback. And look at that score. The Jets three, the Baltimore six in the first period. Hey, Burt Jones threw a 53-yard touchdown pass to Raymond Chester in that game. 53 yards. All right, third down and eight. Manning. Got a man open. Touchdown. Henry Childs make that James Faxton, but wait a minute, there's a flag back at the 32-yard line. Faxton, his second touchdown catch, but I believe it's going to come back. Boy, he was all wide open, but Manning made that play because he scrambled out and got additional time. Arch Archie moved up into the pocket and moved to his left, and when something like that happens, it's generally a, a holding penalty or something against uh, the Saints. Let's listen to the umpire, the official call it. Number 77, offensive holding, third down. Well, that's Marv Montgomery, the left side tackle, who Hank Stram says is their best offensive lineman right now. Boy, that hurts. Thaxton was really doing a good job of getting open, too, when he saw Manning in trouble. Thaxton was running for the open spot. Archie just happened to spot him and laid the ball out there perfectly. So now, instead of a touchdown, it's third and 18. The ball outside the 35. Bomwina jumps offside. Wilson Famwina, the Samoan from San Jose State, jumped across. He was their second first-round draft pick this year, along with Warren Bryant. He is quick, but too quick on that play. Encroachment, 74 defense, third down. So now it moves to third and 13. Famwina just a little bit anxious on that play, wanted to get in there to get up to get a hold of Archie. Now third down and 12 for that's the a, Saints. That's the fourth penalty in this drive, by the way. A lot of flags. 14-10 to go before halftime. Third and 13. Manning intended for Galbraith. And Manning was dumped, and we've got another flag at the 20-yard line. A penalty against Atlanta. I believe we have pass interference coming up. There's Archie Manning getting up. There's Pennywell. He's upset. Rosina also. So that'll be the fifth penalty of this drive. A lot of discussion going on here at the floor of the Superdome. Well, they want to control the control the ball game, but that's exactly what they're trying to do. Nine what? defensive pass interference. First down. That's Pennywell. Automatic first down. So it's at the 19-yard line now. There he is. 59. Robert Pennywell, 6'1", 222-pounder. He picked off a pass last week and went 20 yards for a touchdown against the Detroit Lions. So now we come to a first down at the 19-yard line. The Saints, some ball control on this drive. That's a big break for the Saints coming up with that first down situation now. Instead of fourth, it's first and 10 for the Saints on the 20. Archie Manning sends in motion Don Herman. Play action in the round of Thaxton. He's got a block. And Paxton is to about the 16 and a flag is thrown. There's two flags on the far sideline. Well, a little new wrinkle that time by Hank Stram. Steve on a very fine block back there. I, couldn't, I don't know whether that could have been construed block, uh, clipping or not, uh, Gary. It looked like he was just turning around just as Steve came over to hit him. But I don't know if that's the area in which it happened. It looked like it was downfield a little further. Anyway, it's going to be against New Orleans because they're getting ready to step it off now from the 19-yard line. Gene Barth, 15-yarder. Going to move that ball up to the 34. So we're going back and forth with the penalties. Personal foul, clipping number 41 offense on the run. Well, that's First down. a crackback by John Gilliam that did that, which is illegal. That was downfield down there. And of course, the block by Steve was a perfectly executed block and one that actually made the play go. So the 15-yard penalty now makes it first and 25. They've got to move to the nine-yard line for a first down. Instead, they have it at the 34. Archie Manning now trying to collect his thoughts and keep this drive going. Manning, back to throw on first to 25. The trouble. 
We chase. And we've got a play. Jeff Mero hitting from behind. Are we going to have an intentional grounding? He tried to get the ball up the field to Chuck Muncy. Manning arguing his cause. As Jeff Mero coming from the right side defensive end spot hit Manning from behind. And now let's wait on this penalty. It's thrown about where Manning went down. So if that is intentional grounding, it's a loss of down and 15 yards. That's the most costly penalty in football. Illegal forward pass, intentional grounding, loss of down, number two. Well, that's now seven penalties on this drive. Well, I'm sure that Arch is complaining that he was throwing the ball to Chuck Muncy, and he, he has a legitimate gripe for that part. He just didn't get the ball far enough downfield, I'm sure, for the official to see it. That's a tough call to make, John. I've seen that all year long, and it's hard. It's very hard to make a judgment call like that. Well, those things happen. Those guys are out there trying to do the best job they know how, and they certainly do not want to get this, let this ball game get out of control. Now it's second down and an acre to go. What do you do on second and 40? Give to Galbraith, and he's going to get some of it. 40, 35, 30. 25, and Galbraith is inside the 25-yard line. Ray Easterly dropped him. They still got to go about 14 yards for a first down, but they're back into field goal range. And Archie was out there looking for another flag. 26-yard <laughs> run by Galbraith. Let's take a look at it. A quick open as uh, Galbraith just picks the hole, fine blocking on the offside of the play. Allows Galbraith to start to his right side, go cut back left side. And there we see Ron McCartney, number 56, Coming up, Ray Easterling, 32, making the tackle. Well, he gets a lot of it back. It was 40 yards. Now it's third and 14. In motion, Don Herman. Manny. He's going to Muncy. Now we've got another play. Billy McClay, number 52. It'll be first and goal with the one. Muncy almost made a great catch on that. Their hat deserves another look at it. Let's watch Archie's goes back and sets up. Gets some pressure from the inside. Defensive pass interference. Jeff Moe coming in for pressure down, on it. One yard line. Let's watch the play. I believe they construed that as uh, face guarding Gary with the hands up in, in his face. I'm not sure. You're allowed to put the hands up, but you're not allowed to wave them. And I don't know if that's what they called or not. Well, anyway, it's first and goal at the one-yard line. And now the Saints trailing three to nothing have a chance to go on top. Boy, this has been a, a real gutsy drive by him. A lot of penalties. Eight of them to be exact. Trying to get over and not doing so is Galbraith. And we have yet another play. Offside Atlanta. This may be a record for penalties on one series. That's the ninth penalty of this drive. So they'll have half the distance to the goal. They'll have a first and goal at the half yard line. Defense offside, first and goal on a half yard line. <laughs> I'll tell you, this is the kind of series that must drive coaches crazy. Huh? Well, who never thought they would have got out of the hole on second and 40? With a fine run by Galbraith to bring him down, of course, then the defensive. Interference call by the Atlanta Falcons on the half-yard line. All right, first and goal, half-yard line. That's a give to Muncy, touchdown. Chuck Muncy with a block from tight end Henry Childs, and that is only the third touchdown this year that has been scored against Atlanta on the ground. And Muncy took it in. Let's watch the blocking of number 85, Henry Childs, right there on, the, on your screen. And you see Muncy and Galbraith both going through the hole. Galbraith leading Muncy as Muncy dives over for the touchdown. Emmanuel Zander is on a good, fine block. So after nine penalties, the drive is culminated on a half-yard smash by Chuck Muncy. Zaro to attempt the point after. And Rizzo's got it. And the New Orleans Saints have taken a 7-3 lead with 12 minutes and 49 seconds to go in this first half of play. A 68-yard drive and eight plays with this guy, Chuck Muncy, taking it in. Now, this is
best-selling American-made small car versus Japan's best-sellers. Hello, I'm Jackie Stewart at Indianapolis, where the best-selling Japanese cars competed head-to-head -head against the best-selling small car made in America, Ford Pinto. In two driving tests, certified by the United States Auto Club, which car performed best? Let's find out. In the truck passing test, a 78 Ford Pinto moved out and passed, quicker than a Datsun B210. Passed quicker than Toyota Corolla. Passed quicker than Honda Civic. In the highway entrance test, which car accelerated to the highway speed first? Pinto. Faster than Datsun. Faster than Toyota. Faster than Honda. And 78 Pintos now have added features and are sticker priced lower than last year. Check out the complete line of Ford Pintos yourself at your local Ford dealers. Another better idea from Ford. Would the United States betray a man who risked his life to help our country? A former CIA agent says we did just that to thousands and then tried to cover it up. That's on 60 Minutes tonight on CBS. Getting ready to kick Gazzaro, just booted the point after. The Saints with a 7-3 lead, 12-49. This is Carl Farmer, number 80, second-year man from Pittsburgh, a world-class sprinter. He's averaging just over 20 yards a return. It's going to be a short kick, however. Farmer's got it, though. Brings it out to the 25. And Carl Farmer brings the ball to the 33-yard line. So Atlanta who just gave up their third touchdown rushing of the 1977 season after the 68-yard drive, nine plays, and nine penalties, we should add, <laughs> took five minutes and 18 seconds. So now Atlanta from the 33-yard line. We've had a block kick. We've had two interceptions. We've had a lot going on. And look at Cincinnati and Miami. That's a big one for the Bengals. Miami, Miami. staying on the heels of Baltimore. Chris Barr had a 43-yard field goal in that game. Artowski off to Woody Thompson. And Thompson shoves that line of scrimmage ahead a couple of yards. Jim Merlo was the man to make the stop. Thompson getting a lot of playing time now after Monroe Ely went out with a broken foot. Bob Pollard also in on the stop. By the way, Pollard had to come back in because Joe Campbell, who started, was booted out of the game. Second down, seventh. Baltimore goes ahead of the Jets with three more points. Baltimore nine, New York Jets three in the second period. Again, Bert Jones with a 53-yard touchdown in that game. Here comes Thompson. And Thompson's got a first down out to the 45-yard line. Woody Thompson from Miami of Florida. Clarence Chapman and Royce Grooms over to make the stop on him. Thompson's had the bad rap, or rap, I should say, of fumbling a lot. But he's held on much more efficiently this year. He's a big guy, 6'1", 230. There's Lehman Bennett, the youngest coach in the NFL at 39 years of age. Very impressed with that man last night. Done an outstanding job with a defensive football team. And he feels that the uh, championships are won with a defense. From the 45, a first down. Wallace Francis in motion. And a give. Pick up a couple of yards and another flag on the play. The New Orleans Saints have been blitzing every chance they have, every opportunity. You'll see the safeties coming up and, and faking the blitz and also coming. I believe Chuck Chris has blitzed three times in the last two series that the Atlanta has had the football. Well, Stanback picked up about three yards, but they're going to take the penalty against New Orleans to the 50. Number 82. First and five. Offside against Bob Pollard, the left side defensive end. Well, I guess you blitz a lot, try to get some motion on defense when you're not playing very well. Well, they're trying to get that, stop that run of, of the uh, of the Falcons because anything that ha has happened to the Saints, they've been weak against the run. Well, we got a mix up. Firing off was Atlanta. Bob Pollard and Warren Bryant collided. It's going to be a legal procedure against the Falcons. We're going to have a record in penalties before the day is over. <laughs> The Saints defense is allowed an average of 352 yards per game, which that's within six yards of the club record. Number 66, offense, full start. First down. 66 is Warren Bryant, who you're going to hear a lot of in the years to come. You realize we've had nine penalties against Atlanta, six against New Orleans already. First and ten from the 45. Markowski, Wallace Francis, the intended receiver. Again, they had a blitz on, on that, uh, that down, too, Gary. 
And I think you'll see that blitz most of the afternoon. As we said, the Saints' defense has been weak against the run. And uh, this is one thing they can do to try to stop the uh, men going after. Pat uses on that one, was in on the blitz, number 54, who's done an outstanding job since taking over for Westbrooks at the linebacking position. Well, last year, the Saints had excellent pass rush. It's been suspect this year. Second down, 10. Artkowski to Woody Thompson. Thompson doing a good job. And he's about a yard short of that first down. And Woody Thompson picking his way very proficiently that time. Pat Hughes eventually dropped him. A pickup of nine yards. So it comes to a third down and a yard to go. Woody Thompson. There's what he has done this year. Oh, he's taken advantage of this opportunity to play. Outstanding back and a good hard runner as we saw with that last play. Picks his holes well, keeps his legs going. Get up. Gets every yard he can. Excuse me, John. That offensive line average is 23 years of age for Atlanta. It is young. Give to Thompson again, and he's got the first down. He's shot back, but his forward progress will net him the first down inside the 45. Chuck Chris made the stop. There you saw a good example of a Thompson's drive, leg part, moved across that, that yard strike for the first down before he was knocked back. Chuck Christ, who's a former basketball player at Penn State, having his best season made the stop. He had three sacks and two interceptions coming into this game. So they bring Jenkins to the bottom of the screen, Francis to the top on a first down, just inside the 45. Artkowski to Jenkins. Chapman defending on the play, but they picked up six yards in a hurry. Good play, good throw by Burkowski on that. Quick out to the outside, picking up five or six yards. Someone's hurt down on the field. That someone is Derlin Moore, the defensive tackle, a former standout from Oklahoma. He's down at the 45-yard line. Seven-yard pickup on that pass completion. Going to bring up second and three when we return. We have a timeout with 10-14, 7-3, New Orleans. Here's to good friends. Tonight well, is kind of special. Tomorrow we go back to civilization. Let's have a last night in the wilderness party. Yeah, that's a good idea. I've got just what we need. So tonight. Hey! Hello, oh, Rob. You've been hiding that all week. I was waiting right. for the right moment. Right. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. Well, like the song says, here's to good friends. Let it be low and brow. slick highway, a skid, and a potentially major accident becomes a minor incident. Thanks to a crash barrier with a shatterproof plastic nose cone, a unique plastic developed and supplied by Phillips Petroleum. Developing new plastics while making fine products for your car, that's performance. From Phillips Petroleum, the performance company. A Derlin Moore has helped off the field as the New Orleans Saints have suffered some injuries. They had Chapman shaken up earlier, but he's returned to the game. And now out momentarily at least is Derlin Moore. They have big Mike Fultz up front, Bob Pollard, Eloise Grooms. As we come now to a second and three, Alex yeah, Price, the other man of that forward wall. Markowski to Thompson, he's got the first down. Look at him, pump those legs. Inside the 25 to the 23 yard line. Jim Marsalis and Chuck Chris made the stop, but Woody Thompson is just running over people. Let's look at some offensive blocking up front and watch the, the hole has been picked right there. And let's watch the leg drive. Hits into him, keeps it going. Chuck Chris in on a tackle. Outstanding run. Jim Marsalis coming up to help. Number 40, an old time Kansas City Chief, now playing safety for Hank Strand. 14 yard pickup, first down. Give to Thompson again. Look at this shot. Thompson inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. And Woody Thompson showing that what he's done the previous two games is no joke, no mistake. He's here to play football. We have a man shaken up again for New Orleans at the 21 yard line. A lot of injuries in the early going. That's Alex Price, number 75, out of Alcorn State, a fifth year man. He has six sacks this year. Two sacks last week, but he is shaken. So they've already lost Derlin Moore, and now they're going to have to come in with Oakley Dalton, number 66. Two of the...
last two plays. Well, right now, John Unitas, Thompson is 7 for 41. That's not too bad, huh? Not too shabby. So Price comes out of the ball game. Oakley Dalton, a rookie out of Jackson State, he's 6'6", 295 pounds. Woo! I think he's big enough to play. <laughs> Second down, a yard to go. Kowski to stand back, stand back, trying to get the first down. He's got it. Inside the 10 to the 9 yard line. Haskell stand back, tackled by Ernie Jackson. Stand back, really having quite a year. He's already surpassed a personal high for the year. Let's take a look at stand back as he breaks back to the outside. The hole was closed. Good move by stand back as he breaks back outside and cuts off inside, always knowing that he has to get that first down and get the yardage they need. A good play by stand back. Atlanta trailing seven to three, but they're moving now. They're six first down after a nine yard run. First and goal at the nine. Woody Thompson, this time he finds a lot of congestion. He might have gotten a yard, maybe two. The black shirted Saints are there to throw him back. Grooms and Mike Fultz. Say that Fultz out of Nebraska. Angstrom says he's one of the three strongest men he's ever seen. Gary, that's saying something because there's an awful lot of strong men in the National Football League. Oakley Dalton also in on that last tackle. So it's going to bring up second and goal at just about the eight and a half yard line. They didn't get much on that play. Interesting stat on standback that he has only missed one game in four years with the Falcons. So he's a good hard, hard running horse back there from Tennessee in his fourth year. Arkowski on a big way. Williams, take us. Touchdown! Alfred Jenkins made a remarkable catch. And I'll tell you, Barkowski really disguised that play well. Looked like he was running all the way. But he didn't fool Pat Hughes again because as he was throwing number 54, Pat Hughes made the hit on him. An excellent catch by Jenkins as he came out off of that. Barkowski coming off the bootleg. Let's watch it here. It deserves a good Chuck Chris again coming in on the blitz. Pat Hughes stayed at home. There's the throw. There's the hit by Hughes. And a great catch by Jenkins. Tremendous concentration on the football. Boy, I thought Barkowski's going to run that one all the way. And all of a sudden, he threw the ball. This is Steinfurt to attempt the point after. A flag on the play as Steinfurt hits it to make it 10 to 7. But let's wait a minute. Gene Barth indicating offside will be against New Orleans. So Atlanta will get it. And Atlanta now has taken a 10 to 7 lead. 7.41 to go in a very interesting first half here at the Superdome in New Orleans. We'll be right back. America, you've been changing. Coming, going, changing, growing. The things that make up life. Why is Bank America becoming Visa? To keep up with you. You're traveling, you're moving, you're taking more from life. Today you need money that's good around the corner, all across America, and in 117 countries around the world. That's why Bank America is becoming Visa, the most widely recognized card in the world. Visa, we're keeping up with you. It's hard to tell the difference between J.C. Penney Plain Pockets jeans and the world's best-selling jeans. After all, they're both made of tough, heavy denim with good looks and great styling. In fact, you probably couldn't tell the difference at all unless you noticed the fancy stitching on the back of those famous jeans or the money you saved on Plain Pockets. J.C. Penney Plain Pockets. The big difference between us and them is the pocket and the price. I predict she's going to win. Don't miss 22 big stars competing. Wish I was a pool table. Flip Wilson hosts Celebrity Challenge of the Sexes. Tonight at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. The Atlanta Falcons have taken the lead for the second time in this game. 10 to 7. 66-yard drive and 11 plays. Steinford to kick off for the Falcons. This is Clarence Chapman. Going to bring it out. 15, 20, and Chapman out to the 23-yard line. Pretty good job. He caught that on the dead run. Frank Reed, who earlier blocked a punt in this game, made the stop. A 26-yard return. They're going to mark the ball at the 23-yard line. So the Saints, who led 7-3, now trail 10-7. That last drive of 66 yards. Got to give a lot of credit to Woody Thompson, but also Bartkowski on the touchdown. 
really a good job disguising it. And Baltimore is starting now to mount a lead. Jets three and Baltimore 12 in the second period. Tony Leonard, 31-yard field goal just moments ago for the Colts. Baltimore, sure watching that Miami score. First down from the 23, Manning giving up to Chuck Muncy. And Muncy showing a lot of moves. Brings the ball out to the 27-yard line. Rick Bias coming over there, tripping him up. With Muncy and Galbraith, and you're a defense, you better get some help out there. One-on-one -on -one with those guys is not easy. Muncy sure has some quick feet, so fine moves. And we're looking at Miami score. Miami's up on top of Cincinnati, 14-13 in the third period. Miami and Baltimore with some toughies today. 14 to 13. It's now 10 to 7 in this one. Atlanta, second down, seven yards to go. Archie Manning to Galbraith. And they didn't fool anybody on that scissor action in the backfield. Ralph Ortega made sure of that, the middle linebacker. Well, they may have lost some play or some yardage and will bring up a third down. That play looked like they were a little unsure of what they were doing. A little mix-up back in the backfield there, and uh, Galbraith could not find a hole. There's Hank Stram. And Ortega and Brzezina on the tackle. Hank Stram, I'll tell you, he's 100% behind his players. He had nothing but good things to say about Muncie. Galbraith, he's mystified by the defense. And, of course, the injuries have been really tough this year. Third down and eight. to Herman and Faxton. I tell you, there were two men in the same area, Herman and then Faxton at the 49-yard line. I have to mix up there somewhere. You see a picture of Faxton sitting down on the turf down there, and a play by, Mc, by Dewey McLean actually stopped the completion. The fine play, good drop by McLean back in his area. Archie had that up about another half inch if they might have a first down. This is Tom Blanchard, who started out with a 52-yard kick, and then the last time had his kick blocked by Frank Reed. Kicking from the 11-yard line. Big rush. He gets off a beautiful kick. He can really kick the football, and Ryland Lawrence makes the fair catch. That is picturesque to watch that spiraling kick as Tom Blanchard gets into another one. There's timeout with 5.54. The Falcons lead it 10-7. That was a 46-yard kick. I drive a Ford pickup because my daddy told me they're built tough. Right, daddy? Right. And I bought a Ford pickup because my daddy told me they were built tough. Right, daddy? Yep. And I drive a Ford pickup because my daddy told me they were built tough. Right, daddy? That's right, yeah. My daddy came to Texas in a cold wagon. I had to learn about Ford on my own. I'm a smart old boy, daddy. <laughs> of all Ford trucks registered over the last 12 years, 93 out of 100 are still on the job. When Teleprompter, the nation's largest cable television company, demonstrates their reception, they obviously want their picture to look as good as it possibly can. Out of all the television sets in the country, guess which one they use? Exclusively. That's right. It's a Sony. Well, Tom Blanchard was leading the NFC in punting when he came in here. He's kicked one 52 and 46 yards. He had one block. And after the 46-yard kick just moments ago, Atlanta has the ball at their own 28. Barkowski off to stand back. Stand back, trying to find some place to go. A lot of penetration made that time. Royce Grooms first there, but it's a pickup of four yards on some pretty good running by Standback. Haskell Standback, ninth in the NFC in rushing. Also, an excellent receiver. He caught 25 passes coming into this game. So from the 32-yard line, it's second down, six yards to go. Standback also scored two TDs against the Saints the last time they met, Gary. Second and six for Barkowski and company. In motion comes Wallace Francis. A give to Woody Thompson, and a big pullback is to the 35-yard line. Woody Thompson on that previous drive was really something. Mike Fultz making the tackle. 
6'5", a 278-pound rookie from Nebraska. Pick up a three. It's going to be third down and three. See McQuarrie, number 88, the tight end. He's it for the rest of the game. Jim Mitchell was booted out, and they were going to throw to him a lot today. <laughs> That'll Mitchell. take you out of your game plan. So just coming back off of a, a knee problem, too. It look, was looking forward to playing this ball game. Third and three. Got a blitz. Arkowski. And Woody Thompson can't hang on. There's another flag on the play. Woody Thompson, the intended receiver, Bob Pollard over in that vicinity. We've been informed that the Saints now with nine penalties against them are too short of a record. <laughs> they had 11 back in 1971. I'll almost be willing to bet that they'll set it today. Well, the five-yard step off against New Orleans. Number 82, defensive holding, first down. Bob uh, Pollard is the guilty party. So they now have 10 penalties against them. Interesting stat on Atlanta, on the ball games that they've won, they've, they've controlled the ball with 65 plays a ball game, and the ones that they've lost with only 55 per game. There's the guy, number 82. I bet he'd like to hide right now after that penalty. First down. Arkowski to Thompson. Oh, is he hit? Mike Fultz, the big rookie from Nebraska, really straightened him up on that play. Well, they're high on him. Both he and Joe Campbell, their number one and two draft picks, they think they're going to play a lot of football in the years ahead. A gain of one on that play, and he paid for it. Second down, nine from the 41. Now the Baltimore Colts moving out over the Jets, 19 to three in the second period. Mr. Jones is having himself a day, John. He just threw a 34-yard touchdown pass to Glenn Dowdy. Got a 53 and a 34-yarder today in that game. At the four-minute mark, Mark Kowski to Jenkins. Jenkins to the 45. He's got a first down across the midfield stripe, and his forward progress is going to be marked at the 47. Warren Bryant, number 66, the big rookie from Kentucky, annihilated somebody over there. Oh, did he nail him? He just ran over top of him. <laughs> Well, wow. if you're 6'6", 270, you can run over somebody, I I'll guess. Tell you, he took a beat on his chest, and he just put his helmet right through it. 12-yard pickup on that play. So the Falcons with another first down. 3.55 to go in the first half. I tell you, that Bryant, he's only going to be great. That's all. Ninth first down of the game now for Atlanta. This is Thompson again. And Woody Thompson inside the 45. Atlanta now with that good ball control. That's what Lehman Bennett likes. Bob Pollard making the stop again. For the Saints, pick up a three. It'll be second and seven. There's Bryant, a closer look at him. I tell you, he was the guy that Hank Stram wanted in the worst way, but Atlanta took him ahead in the draft. And Warren Bryant and Marvin Powell were considered last year in the college player draft as the two best collegiate linemen, and neither one have disappointed their respective teams. Powell, of course, with the Jets. Second down, seven. Markowski, this is Francis. And Wallace Francis has a first down at the 35-yard line. And Markowski right now, John's kind of picking away out there. He's throwing a sh short pass, quick out as all that was, and Francis made a fine reception. It was an excellent throw by Markowski over there, but his line has given him excellent protection at this time. He's mixing the calls up well, running and passing. Passing and running. So Bobby Lane used to say, you run when they think you're going to pass, and you pass when they think you're going to run. You can only do two things. <laughs> so you got to be 50% right sometime. All right, a nine-yard pickup on that completion. Francis in motion. Quick pitch to Thompson. Thompson to the 31-yard line. Ah, Pollard making the tackle again. Time now, three minutes to go on this first down. Atlanta moving the football. Woody Thompson's been a busy young man in this football game. That for the game is his 12th carry already, and he has 52 yards. Well, over, over the years, Thompson has averaged just 3.2 yards per carry in three games against New Orleans. Gary, I believe it's a little bit better than that now. He's having himself a day. Second down, six. A blitz. Markowski, a flag on the play. He throws it to Francis. Francis fumbles it. And the New Orleans Saints have it at the 23-yard line. But we had a flag just as the play started. 
New Orleans coming up with the ball. Jim Merlo is the guy that pounced on the ball. It's going to be offside against New Orleans. That's a tough break for the Saints and a good break for the Falcons as they continue their drive downfield. So instead of possession, the ball is a five-yard step off. Defense, offside, second down. Not indicating the guilty party, but let's see if we can pick it up. There it is. That's Fetterspiel. Fetterspiel coming through on the uh, on the blitz was just a little bit anxious, trying to get into Burkowski. First and ten, or second and two, excuse me. Second and two after that five-yard walk-off. From the 27-yard line. Burkowski to Thompson, and Thompson trying to get the first down, and he's got it on a good second effort. Woody Thompson bounced off of the initial tackler and fell forward. Jim Merlo making the tackle. As we approach the two-minute warning, Dave Scott that time, the left side guard, a second-year man from Kansas, threw a very good block. So now at the 22-yard line, as we're going to have the two-minute warning here at the Superdome. So the Atlanta Falcons have possession of the football. They have the lead, 10-7. The ball at the 22-yard line and a first down. I'm John Kelly, a tire engineer. If you think your tires are almost indestructible, then this may be the most important message about tires that you've ever seen. Watch closely. This car has been running for some time now with one front tire dangerously underinflated. Inside, heat is building up until finally a blowout. Now, here's what can happen when tires are overloaded. Another blowout, another emergency stop. Any tire can fail under hazardous load conditions and if it's badly worn, it can fail to stop on wet pavement. Remember, your tire safety depends on tire wear and load, on where and how you drive, and on carefully checking for proper inflation when tires are cold with an accurate gauge like this one. Because even an expert can't tell by just looking, especially with radial tires. If you don't look after your tires, you're looking for trouble. The ravages of war, Craig Cassidy and Derlin Moore, both injured in this first half of play, and obviously that's going to be the extent of their activity here this afternoon. A lot of injuries for the Saints this year. Only one pair of legs between them now. This reminder, the NFL today coming up at halftime. We'll be joining Brent, Phyllis, and Irv. They'll be giving us scores and highlights. Understand Phyllis George has a musical piece that features Franco Harrison Rocky Blyer the Pittsburgh Steelers first down now 10 from the 22 yard line two minutes left to go in the first half Bartkowski back to throw Francis and he and Marcellus had some collision at the two yard line and Francis is not getting up very quickly I tell you that you could see that coming for about five seconds Marcellus is sitting back there just in fine shape ball was thrown Take a look at Perkowski as he decide, tries to run to his left, throw the football. Watch Marcellus catch Francis right on the chops. Good morning, son. Oh, boy, I tell you, they say it's a game of contact, and that isn't indicative of it right there. That's where you're really vulnerable, aren't you? You're going, your concentration on the football, and all of a sudden somebody wakes you up in a hurry. If something will wake you up that will either that or put you to sleep permanently I think they put him to sleep that was a tough shot by Marcellus of course played so well for many years for Hank Stram in Kansas City he was an all pro there in fact he was seven years with Kansas City he's a banker in the offseason so the momentary delay in the action well they take care of Wallace Francis we're going to have a second and ten with 155 left in this first half the Falcons with a 10 to 7 lead and Francis is up and that's good news. Wallace Francis out of Arkansas AM&M. He was drafted in the fifth round by Buffalo in 75. Hadn't played a lot, mostly on special teams, but then when Lehman Bennett came in, they decided to go with him and they got rid of John Gilliam. Francis has been doing a fine job for him ever since and he just received some of the wind knocked out of him. He's all right. He's coming back. He's going to stay in the ball game, I believe. Now they have elected to take him out and replace him. Well, no, nope, you're wrong. They're going to oh, leave him. Don't leave him in. <laughs> I wish they'd make their mind up. It's confusing me. Well, well wait a minute. I think he's going to come out for a play because of the injury. 
Francis now arguing. Well, I'm wrong, too. He's going to stay in. We'll just leave that one alone. <laughs> he said, I've, we've come this far. Let me stay in there and get across that goal line. We have a minute and 55 seconds to go. We want to score. Both teams now have their three timeouts remaining. The ball at the 22 and a half yard line. Second and 10. 10 to 7. The Falcons with the lead. It's been a most unusual first half. Markowski, moments ago, threw a touchdown pass of nine yards to Jenkins. At the control. Markowski back, beautiful protection now, breaks down, he's throwing to Jenkins, a double coverage on him. Boy, he couldn't even get to the ball the way he was covered. Christ and Chapman were there. There's a, an example of some of the rookie mistakes that uh, Lehman Bennett said Burkowski makes. He was well covered with two men, and he threw it right in there. A group. Uh, any one of the three could have come up with a football. Do not think that was a good, entirely a good choice by Burkowski. Let's look at it from our end zone camera. There's a throw, and look how many people out there. Who could have gotten the football? John, you were talking about this last night. A lot of young quarterbacks sometimes think they can throw that ball places where you can't. They have great belief in their ability instead of using their head, right? Well, that's exactly right. There's a perfect example of it. He, he got the ball there, but there was two men around him. A lot of them will try to throw the ball through a, an area maybe about a two or three feet wide and have the confidence in their arms, but a lot of times you just can't get it there. You're better off going to someone who is a lot more open than what you're trying to do. Third and ten. If they don't get it here, they'll have to settle for the field goal. Markowski wanting to throw again. Far side. Picked up beautifully by Jackson. Wallace Francis, the intended receiver, and Ernie Jackson has made two brilliant defensive plays in this first half. Former Duke standout who used to play both ways for the Blue Devils. Markowski rolling away from the blitz. Chuck Chris gets through. There's the throw. Watch the do it. good defensive play by Ernie Jackson right there. Now the field goal attempt. Steinford earlier booted a 31-yarder. This will be a 40-yard attempt. Ken McQuillick in the hole. 10 to 7. The Falcons with the lead and at 145 trying to add to that advantage. 40-yard kick. He got it started low, but he got it. That ball didn't get up very quickly, but he had so much on it, it got there. And Steinford now has done very well since being picked up a couple of weeks ago. He was two for three coming in here, and he's two of two today. As now the Falcons have a 13 to seven lead with 1.42 to go in this first half of play. You know, they had horrendous field goal kicking. Prior to Steinford, they were nine of 22 in the field goal department. Now they're starting to put it together. Hey, looking ahead, countdown to Super Bowl. We're going to have a look at the first 10 weeks of the NFL and what might happen in the Super Bowl. Gary, it looks to me like it's going to be Oakland and Dallas uh, unless Denver and Baltimore can sneak in there somewhere. On the CBS Sports Spectacular next Saturday, the L.A. Times 500, the countdown to Super Bowl and the world's strongest men. 4.30 Eastern Time right here on CBS. Kicking off will be Steinford, Motti, and Chapman Deep. There's your time. 142 remaining. 13 to 7 our score. Chapman at the 9. To the 20. 25. Chapman breaks it all the way out to the 36 yard line. Clarence Chapman doing a good job of returning kickoffs and now we've got some problems out there. Little shoving and pushing going on at the 40 yard line. Remember now, if Atlanta would win this game and L.A. lose to San Francisco, Atlanta would be tied for the lead in the Western Division and very, very much in the wild card spot. They're battling for it. Mike Esposito making the tackle on that kickoff. A 30-yard return by Clarence Chapman to the 37-yard line. There's that last drive. 50 yards and 12 plays. And, John, I think Markowski shows real flashes of brilliance. He does, you know, he's actually still a rookie. As we talked to Coach Bennett last night, that uh, he really has been he's been injured uh, all last year. He's been hurt quite a few ball games this year, and hasn't really played a whole lot. So he's subject to still making some of the foolish errors that rookies do. Archie Manning, the quarterback, going to try to get some points in the waiting seconds to Galbraith. Galbraith, nice open field tackle that time by Ray Brown. For a guy that wasn't supposed to play today, we've certainly mentioned his name a lot, and that's Ray Brown. <laughs> He's done an outstanding job in that defensive secondary. Archie with a hurry-up type offense now, working on his two-minute drill. He picked up on that play 
seven yards. It's going to be second down, three yards to go. 1-13, you see the screen and the time. Back to throw Manning again. Good protection. He's going to run. And Manning across the 50 to the 49. He ran into the official. He did get the first down. Greg Brazina making the stop. The fans booing because the official just couldn't get out of Manning's way. I tell you, Archie Manning showed me something. They're going to use a timeout. They're first of the game. Let's take a look at Archie. He steps up inside the pocket. He likes to run now. Get out of the way, Mr. Fisher. You're going to get hurt again. Joe Connell that time in a way. Archie, a good runner. Archie would know uh, not only holds a passing record for everyone, Greg Bazina on the for the Saints, but Greg Bazina made the tackle, but he also the leading rusher for them over the years. Well, he had 116 yards rushing coming into this game. He picked up eight yards on that scramble to pick up the first down to the 49. Shall we dance, sir? Uh, Archie. So with 56 seconds, John, they've still got a chance to maybe get that field goal back. Well, they, Zaro hasn't been too good on field goals. Only hit three out of ten all season long. I'm sure they like to get that touchdown. They have 56 seconds, as we mentioned, and uh, a lot of things can happen in 56 seconds. You know, this guy, Archie Manning, I admire him, John. He's come back from two operations on his shoulder. Some people thought he might never play again. Great courage by this young man. And it's a big lift for the offense that Archie's been in there this, uh, since taking over for Bobby Douglas in the first quarter. They really miss his guidance, and uh, he's a tremendous football player and a tremendous gentleman as well. So the Saints now have a first down at the Atlanta 49-yard line. 56 seconds as you see it. A first down. Herman and Gilliam, the wide receiver. The give to Chuck Muncy. Muncy to the 45. Muncy tried to get out of bounds, and I believe he did, and stopped the clock at the 42-yard line. Ray Brown again making the stop. So Muncy stopped the clock with 50 seconds. I think the Falcons surprised to see him running on that play. It was a good call by Archie and a fine run by Muncy. As you notice that... The Atlanta Falcons are building for better days and to keep up with our growing city and fans. Hello, this is Steve Bartkowski, and I'd like to show you my town, Atlanta, Georgia. When you talk about the rebirth of the South, you start with Atlanta, with the Omni and Peachtree Plaza with Georgia peaches and Georgia peaches, with peanuts and with people who made them famous. We call Atlanta the city without limits because it has people without limits. People like these United Way volunteers, fans, neighbors, and teammates who work in services for the blind, the Cerebral Palsy Center, the YWCA, and many other agencies funded by our United Way. They take pride in the Falcons, our city, and our United Way. Atlanta wouldn't be the same without them. For all our volunteers, we'd like to say thanks to you. It works for all of us, the United Way. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service by the National Football League. 20 to seven, our halftime score. The Atlanta Falcons hoping to pick up victory number six of the year and stay very much in that wild card chase. You look at New Orleans, they got burned late in the first half, the 74-yard interception by Bias. But Manning's got to come right back and continue to throw the football. Well, he will, Gary. They, neither one of the quarterbacks have been throwing the football that well. Uh, Archie uh, is about 5 for 11, and I believe Burkowski's 5 for 13. Not a whole lot of yardage. One's 35, one's 33. I still believe that they're going to have to come back, throw the football, put it up in the air a little bit more. I believe that the Saints are a little bit uh, out distance the... Uh, Falcons as far as uh, yardage rushing is concerned. But uh, of course, that was, we got two big runs from one from Galbraith and uh, one from Muncie right prior to the halftime. Well, they have 150 yards as opposed to 111 in this first half for Atlanta, but the big interception is 74 yards by Bias. Now let's look around the league. The Detroit Lions leading Tampa Bay. Nobody wants to lose that first one <laughs> to Tampa Bay. Chicago over Minnesota, 10 to seven. That is a final, and Peyton, 275 yards, a new record for a single game. Cleveland leading the Giants in the fourth quarter, 21 to seven. Cincinnati now, putting it on Miami, 23 to 17. And that's a big game in that AFC. Miami a game out behind Baltimore and Cincinnati right in the middle of that Central Division chase, and New England leading Buffalo, 20 to seven. That is a final now. Patriots winning. Hey, how about this one? Big upset there. Philadelphia 9 and St. Louis nothing in the third quarter. That could be a big win for Philadelphia if they continue. 
at Denver, Kansas City at halftime. Denver having a tough time with the Chiefs. That historically has been a tough game for the Denver Broncos. This is Zaro. He'll be kicking off for the New Orleans Saints. His team trailing 20 to 7 as we start the second half of play. And the first half that just had a little bit of everything in it ended with a 74-yard interception by Rick Bias for a touchdown. And then on the last play of the first half, Zaro came in for an apparent field goal attempt. Tom Blanchard tried to fake it, fell down, and tried to scramble out and throw the ball. So if you like entertaining football, we've had it thus far. Carl Farmer is deep for Atlanta. Zaro's got the okay. There's Farmer. A line drive kick. Tough to handle. Tom Moriarty bobbles it, picks it up. He's going to bring it back out. Tom Moriarty trying to go wide. And he gets back out across the 21-yard line. Boy, he really averted disaster on that play. Looked like he might be backed up deep in his own end of the field, but got out to the 21-yard line. Tom Moriarty, an excellent special teams performer. So here's the statistics in that first half. The Saints in total offense, John, are leading. As you see, at 150 yards to uh, 111 for the Saints, both neither one of the teams that we mentioned have very good passing yardage, 35 and 34. There you see the rushing yardage of the Saints, 116 to 76 for the Falcons. Chuck Muncy and Tony Galbraith have impressed. Now, we've got an official's delay right now coming over to the Saints' side of the field to dis discuss something. The ball's at the 21-yard line, and the Falcons with the lead and with the football. Atlanta came in here five and four. The Washington Redskins are five and four. And so there's a real chase going on for that wild card in the NFC. And of course, right now, Atlanta's thinking of still winning the division if they could get some help from San Francisco today. Well, that'd be a big ball game later this afternoon. Los Angeles, San Francisco would be a big one for Atlanta, but first they must win this one. From the 21, a first down in motion is Francis. Give to big Woody Thompson. And he comes out across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Mike Fultz making the stop. Woody Thompson having a very fine football game. They mark it at the 27. It'll bring up a second down. And now let's make it four yards to go. Thompson, 63 yards on 14 carries. His last two ball games, he's averaged 70 yards per ball game. Steve Bartkowski has thrown a nine-yard touchdown pass. For the second and four. He gives the Haskell stand back and he's in trouble. Hit hard by Joe Fetterspiel. Fetterspiel has played very well. You know, last week he had 13 tackles and he's had two times he's been in the backfield and this time he was there at the line of scrimmage. Let's watch Fetterspiel on the tackle as he comes from behind the guard right there as you see him. And a fumble on the ball, but uh, the back fell right on top of it. That was that Haskell stand back recovering his own fumble. There's Stan back coming off the field. He was shaken up on that play. The ball got loose, but fortunately, he was able to pounce right back on top of it. Billy Pritchard is in the backfield now with Woody Thompson. Third down, three. Give to Thompson, and he's not going to get that first down. Shoved back by Joe Feathersfield again. So Atlanta, with their first offensive opportunity here in the second half, is going to have to kick the football. And New Orleans will send Motty back for the punt. John James to kick. You, Alex Price coming off the field for New Orleans is limping. They've had Durlin Moore hurt, Craig Cassidy. They've had some casualties. Last or only punt of this game for James was a 45-yarder in the first half. Paul Reisick will snap the ball for Atlanta. Good, 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 good chance to try to block this one here. They don't get much pressure put on, though, and James with a picturesque kick. Motty calls for the fair catch at the 30. James and Blanchard are kind of having a duel here today. <laughs> the number one and two putters in the NFC, and both of them are kicking the ball very, very well. From the 31, New Orleans has the ball. Go, Jimmy, go! Go, Jimmy, go! Cold night, Bob. Did you put in the Presto antifreeze? Presto, Presto. Who needs Presto? Presto, Presto. You need Presto. If your antifreeze is worn out or you don't have enough, you could be in trouble. So put in a fresh fill of Prestone, too, to prevent corrosion and freeze-ups. Prestone! Prestone! We need Prestone! 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 You need Prestone. Can I get you something else? Yeah. 
an ambulance. <laughs> Americans overeat more than anyone. But what's really getting fat is the cost of health care. Oh, one more piece won't hurt you. Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans have programs to hold costs down. But everybody needs to help. Son, when you eat like this, I just love you to death. <laughs> there is no free lunch. Sooner or later, we all pay for it. All of us help you. 12.52 to go. Third quarter from the 31-yard line. The Saints have the ball. A 39-yard kick that time by James. Quick pitch to Chuck Muncie. Muncie was 61 yards in the first half. Brings the ball out across the 34 to the 35-yard line. Muncie is over 600 yards rushing for the year. Ray Brown coming up to make the stop. Last year, Muncie rushed for 652 yards. Boy, I can't believe this score. Philadelphia 16, St. Louis nothing. Boy, that's, that's a kick in the pants to St. Louis so far in the third period. And what Chuck, a big one Monday. And now Chuck, Chuck Muncie with that 61 yards there, uh, Gary, has become the top running back in the history of the Saints. Ron Jaworski, by the way, threw a 15-yard touchdown pass moments ago in that Eagle Cardinal game. Here's a give now to Galbraith, and Tony Galbraith trying to get the first down. He's not going to make it. Claude Humphrey made sure of that. Claude Humphrey last year had 18 sacks for Atlanta. Now it's down to five this year, but John, the reason is they play the run first now instead of the rush. They don't turn Humphrey loose uh, too often to get to that pass. Or they want to control that line of scrimmage, and they have done that very, very well all season long. So we come to a third down, three yards to go. 11.45 to go, third period. 20 to 7, Atlanta with the lead. Don Herman, number 87, to the bottom of the screen. Gilliam to the top. Faxton, the tight end. Manning dumps it off to Muncie. Gets a block from Sanders, but that's all he's going to get because reacting well was Atlanta. That's been their story all year long is pursuit. They go after you. And that time Ortega and Pennywell got over in a hurry. Well, they really bent Muncie back on that play. Ortega, number 55, plays the middle for the Falcons. Not an extremely large man, only about 225 pounds, but he's so quick and plays the run so well, going around blocks, following guards, and he, uh, also he is an excellent pass defender as he gets back into the secondary. Blanchard kicking, he's averaged 49 yards in this game, and he just continues to kick the air out of it. Here's Lawrence, Rollin Lawrence inside the 15, giving ground. And Lawrence is going to be tackled at the 15-yard line. Excellent reaction that time by Kid Bordelow, number 50, who is a Louisiana native. He went to high school right here in New Orleans and played his football at LSU. For the millions of people who need a full-size car, introducing the 1978 Ford LTD. If you need six-passenger space, if you need a roomy trunk, if you want mileage like this, then the full-size 1978 Ford LTD could be just the car for you. LTD, a better idea from Ford. Come on, gang, big smile. Well, you don't want to leave the good times behind. Back along a simple shooting Kodak Trimlight Instamatic 18 camera. It's right in your pocket, and it takes big, beautiful pictures just like this. Show them, shouldn't it? Don't leave the good times behind. Say them with a Kodak Trimlight 18 camera. It makes a great gift in an outfit that says, Open me first. To save Christmas in pictures. From soup to nuts, Charlie Brown is cooking up a special treat for Thanksgiving. A fun feast. A Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, Monday at 8, 7 Central and Mountain Time. The St. Louis Cardinals with a 6-3 record now trying to come back in that game with the Eagles. They trail 16-7. Jim Otis, a 25-yard run for a touchdown. Just moments ago, Tom Blanchard kicked the ball 51 yards, and the hang time was 4.9. That is something. First down now. Barkowski back to throw from the 5. He's in trouble. Bob Pollard, number 82. That's his fifth sack of the year. And Bob Pollard has had some personal problems this year. Now playing like the Bob Pollard we saw last year. Let's take a look at, as you see, a little fake uh, play action there of the fullback. Burkowski with plenty of time. Outstanding uh, performance by the defensive secondary back there, covering the men, allowing Bob Pollard, number 82, to get in on the sack. 
Bob Pollard very quick. There's the final now. Miami has lost their third game of the year, 23 to 17. They will play St. Louis on Thanksgiving Day. Second down now, 19 yards to go. Bringing the ball out, big Woody Thompson. They're trying to take it away from him. Thompson out to the 10 yard line. A lot of reaction that time by Chuck Crist, the voice grooms. And now we come to a third down. Still 14 yards to go. A gain of five. Trying to go wide, and he'll go nowhere. Stand back. Nailed by Tommy Myers, who was at fifth defensive back to come in. You talk about a guy that'll sacrifice his body. Tom Myers will go after it. He's playing with a bad knee. He's knocked himself out, I think, a record time in the NFL. I'll tell you what, as many times as Chuck Crist has blitzed this afternoon, and he's no, uh, he'll throw his body around there too, Gary. All right, now John James with a tough situation. He's punted 12. So that's Rick Motti back at the 45 of New Orleans. 42 average, 42-yard average for James. Ten men are coming after him. And he's got good protection, but he hit it very, very high. Motti's going to try to return it to the 50-yard line. And he got a yard, and that's all. Very fine coverage that time by Atlanta. Andy Spiva, number 51, was down there in a hurry. And so now the Saints have good field position at the Atlanta 49-yard line, 849. All right, John, next Saturday on the CBS Sports Spectacular, get this one. The World's Strongest Men, the eighth event. This is the girl lift. That's the only thing worthwhile lifting, Gary. Well, anyway, the competitors are going to squat with a bar across their shoulders, attached to which are two girls weighing 110 pounds each. That's part of the CBS Sports Spectacular, along with the LA Times 500, and count down the Super Bowl next Saturday at 4.30. From the 49, first down, Manny. Waiting for Gilliam. John Gilliam. Boy, he waited a long time for him to make his move. Bias defending on the play, and that'll be a first down. You can see Manning wanting to throw that ball about three different times. Well, they had excellent pass protection. Let's watch the uh, pass protection that they give Archie as we see them standing on the line of scrimmage, waiting and waiting. Finally, there's the throw. Excellent job done by that offensive line. Good well, throw. Gilliam made the uh, reception. John Gilliam has been quite a performer. Three-time All-Pro, four Pro Bowls. That was a 17-yard pickup. The ball now at the 33 of Atlanta. First down. Manning again. Looking to Herman. He's hit. Look at that pass in the third. Ryle and Lawrence collided with him before the ball got there. That's the second time in this game Atlanta has had that pass interference. That's going to set it up. First down just inside the 20-yard line. The Saints are not dead yet in this game. They're coming just right a, back. Just a quick slant here. As you see, Archie moving back three steps, waiting for Herman to come inside. There's the throw. The ball is tipped. And then the men are hit, but they, they have called something. Let's wait and see what they call. What they're saying on that, John, was when the ball was tipped, it was fair game for everyone to go after that football. So they are not going to call the pass interference. And that ball is tipped like that. Hang on. You're going to get hit. Well, we didn't see the ball being tipped on the initial throw, but on the replay, we're able to see it plainly. Good call by the officials. So instead, it's going to be second and ten. I tell you what, those replays really show it, don't they? <laughs> so the ball now still at the 33-yard line. Second down, ten. Gilliam, Herman, the wide receiver. Oh, we've got people moving around. Don Morrison, the right offensive tackle, moved. As the blitz was on, he moved. They were trying to adjust their blocking, and Morrison took a step. That'll be five yards against the Saints. Archie trying, Archie trying to change his play at the line of scrimmage. As you see right here, everybody else standing still. Morrison's one who moved on a play. We had an a apparent blitz coming in. Archie wanted to try to Ball change the play at the line of scrimmage. 76, offense. Nine penalties now against New Orleans for 74 yards. I tell you, John, you want to move when you see those guys starting to blitz on you. Your first thought is to back up. And here is Cleveland. Cleveland 21, New York 7, final. Well, the Browns are now 6-4. and four. They've had a tough schedule this year, but they're right in the thick of it. Boy, that central division of the AFC is something. Morris Gregg has done a fantastic job with the Cleveland Browns. Second down, 15 yards to go. Manning again, look out. 
Down he goes. Clyde Humphrey is there. Well, Clyde Humphrey wasted no time that time storming through. That's one time Clyde did not play the run. Lost clear outside now. The 45 to the 46 yard line. Here comes a move by Claude Humphrey taking an inside rush. No one picked him up. He was able to beat his man, Don Morrison. And Humphrey now with five, uh, six sacks. Loss of nine yards on the play outside to the 46. And now it's third and 24. Now look at this. The Falcons need three sacks. Equal that club record of 35. Oh, the defense this year is going to break a bundle of Falcon records. The rate right they're going. They had given up only 62 points prior today, and so far seven. Manning back to throw again. Steps up against the rush. He is hit hard from behind. Boy, he was really nailed by Pennywell, and he's down. Getting up very slowly. That was some shot. Let's let's watch Manning right there as he takes a pretty good shot from Pennywell. And he did take a good shot, especially coming from the blind side as it was. He was sitting there waiting to throw the football. Pennywell just kind of annihilated him out there. Boy, John, that's got to rattle your teeth a little bit. Oh, does it hurt. Blanchard to kick now. He's averaging almost 50 yards here today, 49-7. He hits a high one. Rollin Lawrence is deep for the Falcons at the 10. He bottled it. It's loose. The Falcons got it, though. Carl Farmer comes up with it. And at the five-yard line, and the Falcons has really almost had a disastrous situation. Carl Farmer, I believe, is the guy that saved it. He is, number 80. And at the five-yard line, Atlanta has the ball, a 20-7 lead. Introducing a breathtaking line of shirts made of remarkable cotton-rich fabric. The shirts, the Cotton Royale collection by Van Heusen. The fabric, natural blend, the comfort of 60% cotton, matched with durable press performance, the comfort of extra cotton, the joy of no ironing. I'd do anything for James, except iron his shirts. If you're looking for comfort, look for the seal of cotton. The more cotton, the better you feel. Whose reputation for quality parts is over half a century old? Where can you find over 100,000 parts, many of them better than your car's original parts? And who also supplies those parts to over 50,000 professional mechanics? Now, who should you see for quality parts? NAPA, that's N-A-P-A. We help keep America moving. Only the sly George Burns could do a one-man show with the help of Ann Margaret, Gladys Knight of the Pips, a captain in Tennille, and special friend Bob Hope. Enjoy it all this Wednesday at 10, 9 Central and Mountain Time, right here on CBS. Well, a moment ago, the Atlanta Falcons almost got themselves in real trouble. They're still in some difficulty at the five-yard line, and Detroit now has taken lead over Tampa Bay, 16-7. 39-yard kick by Blanchard. Lawrence fumbled the ball, but very alertly, Carl Farmer came up with it at about the two-yard line, got it out to the five. The Falcons with that bad field position here in the second half started their own five. They lead 20 to seven. Arkowski to Woody Thompson, and Thompson brings it out to the 10-yard line. Woody Thompson, a fine football player. Hey, look at this now. 16-14, a 69-yard touchdown pass from Jim Hart to Mel Gray, and the Cardinals aren't dead yet in that one after trailing 16 to nothing. St. Louis came out of that dream. They still play in Dallas, I guess, in that first period, Gary. Well, they have the longest winning streak in the NFL. They've won five in a row, but they're really having some problems today. Four-yard pickup on that last play. It's going to ring up second and six. Haskell stand back, trying to go wide, and he makes it out to the 14-yard line. Jim Merlo making the tackle, and we come to a third down. Jim Merlo out of Stanford. Also Ernie Jackson coming up. Jackson's not very big on that run situation, 176 pounds. All right, Mr. Unitas. Hmm, how do you like my printing? You think they did that? I wrote that fine. Did you really? <laughs> I wondered about you. I didn't know quarterbacks could write. <laughs> Third down now, two yards to go. Yeah, 
Again now to Thompson trying to get the first down and he's got it. Woody Thompson, who's been a bread and butter football player this afternoon. Mike Fultz, Ernie Jackson stop him. And now the Falcons get in a little breathing room after starting from their own five yard line. And Woody Thompson's having a day for himself. He's got to be very happy. 77 yards on 18 carries. Seven yards uh, over what he has uh, picked up for the last two ball games, Gary. They're going back into their ball control game right now. Doing very well now. People have been able to run against New Orleans this year, and right now Atlanta's trying to do that. Six minutes to go in the third quarter, and they hammer it out again across the 20 to the 21-yard line. New man in the lineup. That's Esposito, who just checked in. Number 26, carrying the first time. He's the second-year man out of Boston College. There he goes. Not very big, about 183 pounds. Mike Fultz making the stop. Second down and five. Atlanta sending in an awful lot of substitutes back and forth. I don't know if they're calling the plays from the sideline or whether Bukowski's calling them from his own, uh, in his own huddle. Falcons now have 107 yards rushing for the game. Bukowski giving up, and here comes Haskell Standback. Standback, very close to that first down. Let's see where the mark is forward progress. Tripped up that time by Jim Merlo. Have a man down getting up slowly now. Dave Scott for the Falcons. He's okay. Boy, he's a big guy. 6'4", 285 pounds. Didn't play a lot last year, but a third round draft pick in 76. They're going to measure. And boy, they got it by the nose of the football. First down, Atlanta. So Atlanta now trying to eat up some time and get out of the bad field position that they've inherited here in the second half. Oh, San Francisco three, Los Angeles nothing in the first period. Again, the perspective on that game, should San Francisco win, Atlanta win here, there's a tie for first in the Western Division. First down, Arkowski to stand back, stand back to the 31. Haskell stand back, protecting that football, picking up four yards on the play. Well, they have everything going their way now, Gary. The time, uh, 4.46 in this period. They're c controlling the football. Running get uh, is what they want to do with it, try to eat that clock up, and they're moving out. The offensive line doing a fine job blowing the Saints right off the ball. Van Note is going off of the field. Hank Stram very pensively looking at that scoreboard. Jeff Van Note is out. Paul Ricey, number 53, has replaced him at center. Arkowski to Woody Thompson on a second and six. And Thompson, is the ball loose? It is. New Orleans has recovered. Pan Hughes, I believe, was the guy that got it away from Woody Thompson. And Grooms fell on it. And that is a major break in this football game at the 32-yard line. Now the Saints have it. Let's take a look at uh, Thompson as he's going in through the line. There's the good hit. There you see the ball coming out and watch Grooms as he falls on the football. Good play by the Saints. A good break for the Saints on the third and the uh, 38, 32 yard line. Let's see whether or not Archie goes for the big bomb in this situation, the first chance. Pat Hughes getting a breather, former New York Giant, first down. John Gilliam, now Mike Strong is in the backfield. Number 33, Herman, comes in motion to the near side. Again, to Tony Galbraith, and Galbraith moves that offensive line forward as he is close to the 27-yard line, running behind Terry Steve, number 68, second-year man from Wisconsin. So Mike Strawn is in the game for a brief encounter, and he is a fine running back. Five-yard pickup on the play. It'll be second and five. So the Saints have been knocking on the door, John. They've been in the Atlanta end of the field, but they still haven't been able to get any points on the board. That's one of those defenses that bend, 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 but they haven't been able to be bro uh, broken as yet. Second and five, 341 to go, third quarter. Herman in motion again. Manny gives off to Mike Strong, and Strong's got a first down inside the 20-yard line. Strawn, Humphrey, and Wildwood Lawrence combined on the stop and Strawn, a third-year man from Iowa State who had 52 yards rushing last week. I'd say he'd be playing starting for some football teams. Let's let's take a look, a block at the, a look at some blocking by Childs as everything started to the left side. Strawn coming back over, outstanding block on Humphreys. The Childs just kind of keeps him at the line of scrimmage. Humphrey did not go anywhere. First down now. 
a give up the middle to Galbraith and nothing doing because Pennywell is there. Robert Pennywell, what an addition he's been to this football team. So they're going to gain a yard on that one. It'll be second down and nine. The ball resting at the 18-yard line of Atlanta. 20 to 7. The Falcons with the lead, but they've been backed up in their own end of the field the entire third quarter. But thus far, the Saints have not been able to score on them here in this third quarter. There's Sanders, the Z-Man, as they call him, number 79, Archie Manning, with John Hill, the center. Manning back, throwing Herman. John Herman made quite a catch on that ball. It was underthrown. Rollin Lawrence defending on the play, but it's still going to go to a third down and still four yards to go. I'll tell you, that was a quick out, and, and uh, Archie just got the ball off, but he was really lowered. He got a pretty good shot on there. Do you would think on a quick pattern like that, that wouldn't happen. <laughs> Somebody evidently missed an aggressive block, and the man come flying clean through there. You can't throw the ball any quicker than that, right? <laughs> no. Third down now. Long four to go. Manning, play action fake, rolling. Throwing, Childs, touchdown! Henry Childs wide open. And the New Orleans Saints are right back in this football game. 20 to 13. That's Childs' sixth touchdown catch of the year. This young man really having an outstanding year tied in for the New Orleans Saints. Let's take a look at the fake there by Archie as he rolls back to his right side. Looking and looking, plenty of time. Finally spots Childs. Fine reception, fine call. Childs is just one touchdown reception shy of a club record. Set by Danny Abramowitz. Right after a tamper. Oh, look out. John Hill, the center. Now, that's what a center hates, isn't it? You got your head down between your legs and somebody runs over you. Man, says, what does it say after something like that? He says, I'm sorry. <laughs> Rod Humphrey was the guy that just annihilated him up there. <laughs> Look at Hill. He's getting up and oh, saying, I Lord. still got to snap the ball. This is a clock. Take it easy, baby. Well, that's got to intimidate you a little bit, huh? I'll tell you one thing it'll do is get your attention. <laughs> <laughs> 20 to 13 the score. The New Orleans Saints, a 32-yard drive in five plays after that fumble by Woody Thompson. And Archie Manning gets him on the board. Okay, it's Eight of the nine games this year, nobody scored more than a touchdown on Atlanta, so the Saints offense is coming back today. Hill to snap it. The kick by Zaro is on the way, and he got it. And it's a 20 to 14 game, a brand new football game here at the Superdome. We have one minute, 34 seconds left to go in this third quarter of play. Inside this new Firestone radial tire is an improved steel cord with five million miles of developmental testing. Where once we used five strands, we now use ten strands of steel. Seven, around two, wrapped by one. A cord construction so important, Firestone named the tire for it. Seven, two, one. The new steel belted radial 721. Now, from Firestone. The Quintrix two-color picture tube from Panasonic brings you a very lifelike picture. Because Quintrix tube is our inline picture tube with an extra pre-focus lens that concentrates and focuses the electron beam to bring you Panasonic's sharpest picture ever. So lifelike, you may even feel you're part of the picture. Quintrix two, one more reason Panasonic is just slightly ahead of our time. Archie Manning just tossed a 13-yard touchdown pass. John, take a look at it. And there's a look at what Archie Manning does best throwing on the run. A fine throw and a fine catch by Childs. John, I think it points out you got to respect a guy who can run as well as Manning, and that's what happened on that play. Here is Zaro kicking off. It's now 20 to 14, a minute 32 remaining in this game. The Falcons bringing it out. Across the 30 to the 34-yard line. And bringing it out is... Cedric McIntyre, who started the year with the Dallas Cowboys. 20-yard return, and the Falcons, who have not enjoyed field position in this second half again, better position than they've had in a long time. There's the drive. 
A fumble by Woody Thompson converted into a 32-yard drive for the touchdown. That's the old saying, Garrett, turnovers will kill you. Interceptions and fumbles. And that's what the Atlanta, the uh, New Orleans Saints took advantage of, a fumble recovery to go in for the touchdown. At the 34-yard line, first down, Atlanta. Bartkowski giving off to stand back. Here he comes. Across the board, he's got a first down to the midfield. Try to be fumbled at all. But I believe it's been blown dead. Ball blown dead at the 50-yard line. Jim Marsalis making the stop after a 15-yard carry. And now we have a man shaken up. That is Stanback, who's hurting at the 45-yard line. Boy, he took a pretty good shot when he went down. We have another man down at the 35-yard line for Atlanta. Two men on that play for the Falcons shaken up. It's Dave Scott. There he is. Big guy, second-year man. Boy, look at Stanback. He's in pain. That would be a blow to Atlanta. Let's look and see what happened on the play. There's a good handoff to Stanback. He picked the hole very, very well. Van Note on an extremely good block. Let's see as he goes down what happens to him. Hard to tell from here. Jim Marcellus and Chuck Crisp both in on the tackle. That's a hard floor down there, Gary. Maybe just knocked the wind out or bruised an elbow or something. But both of them, Stanback and Scott, come out of the ball game. Billy Pritchard has replaced Stanback at the running back spot. First down at the midfield strike. Markowski giving off to Woody Thompson, and Thompson runs into a lot of attention at the 47-yard line. Alex Price, number 75, who's playing a little bit gimpy himself with a leg injury. We've had some injuries in this game. Earlier, Derlin Moore, Craig Cassidy were taken out. Two guys thrown out of the game, Joe Campbell and Jim Mitchell. They're going to be using the entire roster before this one's over. Yeah, they also tell me that this artificial turf will prevent in knee injuries, but ever since it's come in, I think I've seen more knee injuries than before. Second down now, seven yards to go. Esposito and Pickard, the running back. This is Esposito. The little guy hammers forward to the 42-yard line. And it's again Alex Price making the stop for the Saints. So we come to a third down and two yards to go. Esposito only carried the ball 20 times coming into this game. Hasn't played an awful lot, but a hard-nosed performer. That's the end of the third quarter with a score here from the Superdome. The Atlanta Falcons 20, the New Orleans Saints 14. We now pause for a word from your local station. Join Gladys Knight and the Pips, Jerry Lee Lewis, Bette Midler, and many more stars on the Rolling Stone special, Friday night on CBS. Gyrations going on here in the Superdome. I noticed you, John, going up here doing, moving around a little bit. I'll tell you what, if that doesn't get your adrenaline going, nothing will. We start the fourth quarter of play. Third down and two. The ladder, the ball at the 41 yard line of New Orleans. Arkowski busted play. And he fumbled the ball. He was close to the first down, and the ball was knocked backwards. Esposito fell on it. They lost what might have been a first down on that play. It's now fourth down. Chuck Crist is the guy that jarred the ball loose. But, John, they just missed the handoff. Well, that's two mistakes now that they've had. They had that one fumble before and a missed handoff in the backfield this time. 20-14 our score as we've just started the fourth quarter. 
John James to kick. Body is deep for New Orleans. Big rush put on. Body coming over is going to let it hit. And it's going to go to bounds. It looks like inside the 10-yard line. Good pressure put on by Kim Jones on that punt. Came storming through for New Orleans, but James got it away. And they're going to have the ball at the 10-yard line. Mr. Unitas, what do you plan on doing Thanksgiving Day? I'm going to bite Tom. All right. Well, we've got a football game also coming up on Turkey Day. Chicago against Detroit in that black and blue division. Yeah, that could be a real tough football game as we see Chicago beating uh, Minnesota. Detroit is ahead of Tampa Bay to throw that conference right in the deadlock. It does. As Chicago defeating Minnesota now with only a one-game lead over the Bears. So at 12 noon, the NFL today, the game at 12.30, Turkey Day right here on CBS. First down, Tim, from the 10-yard line for the Saints. Archie Manning giving up. Not much yardage on that play to Tony Galbraith. You know, this is the first time in the second half that the Saints have had bad field position. And Archie staying with the uh, ground attack. Uh, Mr. Thunder, Mr. Lightning taking it to them. Galbraith, not much of a hold up there that time. Picked up one or two yards. Wilson Fomwina making the stop on that last play as Archie Manning has his team now huddled back at the five-yard line. Second down, eight, a pickup of two. 20 to 14. At halftime, the Falcons led 20 to seven. But Manning has since thrown a 13-yard touchdown pass. Quick pitch. Here comes Mike Strine, and immediately Jeff Miro was there. Good reaction by Miro, the third-year man from West Virginia. That play just didn't get underway at all. Also, Ray Brown coming up. It was an, out, an outstanding play by Ray Brown as he saw the pitch and watched Ray come up and make the tackle. He was up there before Galbraith could uh, get a beat on him and uh, knock him out. Fine play by Ray Brown. Loss of four, it'll be third and 12. I tell you, Ray Brown, for a guy that was not even considered a possibility of playing today, has had about 12 tackles. Third down and 12. Manning going deep for Gilliam. But Gilliam bumped at the 35. Good coverage that time by Rick Bias, who already has an interception for 74 yards. It looked like Gilliam uh, either lost sight of the football or was bumped or something. He seemed to pull up there, Gary. Let's take a look at him here from our end zone camera as he's going downfield. Now he's going to start back to the outside. He just sort of slows up right here. He never sees the ball. You see, he looks the ball late right there. Tom Blanchard to kick on fourth down. He hits a beauty. Back is Rollin Lawrence inside his own 45-yard line. And over there in a hurry to make the stop is Marty. The ball is fumbled. Who's got it? I believe the ball may have been blown dead. Let's see. The discussion going on, some pushing and shoving. It's going to be Atlanta's football. Marty made quite a tackle and fell on the ball, but... It was blown dead. A 50-yard kick that time by Tom Blanchard to the 50-yard line is where Atlanta will have it. You know, we were talking about Ray Brown a moment ago. A dozen tackles. He only has nine. <laughs> so there's a delay in the action with 12.49 to go in this fourth quarter. Atlanta holding on to a 20-14 to 14 lead. Well, in towels, I think there's a good selection of color. We're at a Sears store to find out why Sears is where America shops. Sears paints are excellent paints. They cover very easily. They cover very quickly. I shop at Sears for my drapery to my apartment. I have an apartment that has very unusual size windows. And you can find any size and color selection that you want at Sears. I like the candy. <laughs> Sears, where America shops. When life's grind gets to you. Oh, Mustang. Mustang. Let a Mustang take you away. This is a great time to go Mustang, because this year, Mustang 2 is base sticker price less than last year. Mustang. The 78 Ford Mustang 2 T-Roof Convertible. Go Mustang. So beat the grind. Go Mustang. A better idea from Ford. 
This is Charlton Heston. Please join me and a host of celebrities as the American Film Institute salutes America's greatest movies. Monday at 9.30, 8.30 Central and Mountain. Gary Bender and John Unitas at the Superdome. We have 12.49 remaining to this game. Atlanta, a 20 to 14 lead. The crowd booing, feeling that the Saints had a fumble recovery on that punt. 43,135 on hand. Barkowski back to throw. Fine catch on the far side by Woody Thompson. That's the first down, a very close to it. Let's see. Nope, he's going to be a yard short of it. Woody Thompson making the grab. John, now there was a case of Barkowski looking the coverage off pretty well. That's something you're talking about. He was looking for this deep man downfield. There was no one uh, actually open except Thompson over there. Going to his alternate receiver did an outstanding job, Gary. That's the first pass this half by Barkowski in Atlanta. He's batting a thousand so far. Gain and I. Barkowski to Woody Thompson, a flag on the play. He's got the first down, but a penalty play. Joe Fettersfield making the stop. And it looks like we've got holding the preliminary call against New Orleans or check at Atlanta. Well, that'll be a 10-yard step off and negates that first down run by Woody Thompson. That's the 11th Falcon penalty. That's a bad penalty, Gary, because uh, you've got a first down. You need, only need one yard. There's no sense in holding a man in that kind of a situation. Well, John, that ties the Falcon team record for number, number 68, in the game. offensive holding. 97 yards and penalties, 11 of them tying a Falcon record. So the ball back at the midfield stripe. Second down and virtually 10 yards to go. Van Note has now come back in at center for Atlanta. He was shaken up earlier. Haskell Stanback is back in, and there he goes to the 45-yard line. Stanback bruised the knee earlier, but he's come back in. Bob Pollard making the stop. Five-yard pickup on the play, and we come to a third down. Play information being sent through the tackle spot as now Brent Adams comes back in, replacing Phil McKinley. Third down, 11:41. It's an important third down for the Falcons. You see Lehman Bennett looking on. That's Bennett with the hat on, 39 years old. Arkowski on third and five. Got protection. Stand back. Can't come up with it. He was at the first down marker when the ball was there, but he could not come up with it. It's fourth down. Pat Hughes, number 54, defending on the play. Ball was a little bit low for a stand back, but uh, he had a chance of picking it up. So now John James will kick again, and Motti will go back for the Saints. Thus far, this is Motti, a free agent out of Penn State. James with a 39-3 average. He's kicked four times thus far. Big rush, a high snap, he almost got it. He being Kim Jones again. And that kick is hitting on the goal line. And Atlanta's going to down it at about the three. <laughs> now let's wait a minute. The official on the far side indicating for a moment it might have made it into the end zone, and I think it did. They're going to rule the ball hit on the goal line. They're going to bring it out to 20. The official on the far side indicating it hit just inside on the fly. And so New Orleans will have the football at the 20-yard line. A 45-yard kick by this young man, John James of the Atlanta Falcons. A guy I know tells me this new Sunbeam adjustable groomer razor is the greatest shaver ever made. Well, I say, so what? I'm a blade man. He says, try it and you won't be. He's right. Here's how Sunbeam's new groomer razor works. 12 stainless steel blades cut at 8,000 strokes a minute through the thinnest shaving head you can get. Stands whiskers up and shears them off, at or below the skin line. You a blade guy? Try this. It may be the last time you use a blade. I had my own way of tackling. I used to grab the whole backfield. Then I threw guys out until I found the one with the ball. When I started drinking beer, I did the same thing. And this is the one I'm holding on to. Light beer from Miller. It has a third less calories than the regular beer. It's less filling, and it tastes terrific, too. 
I also love the easy opening can. Like beer from Miller, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Here's the situation. It's 20 to 14. Atlanta with the lead. The Saints with the football 80 yards away. 11 minutes and 9 seconds, a lot of time. And there's the statistics on Archie Manning. He has Muncie and Galbraith as his running back. This crowd has worked up here at the Superdome. A pass to Muncie. Muncie picking up maybe four yards on the play. Boy, just give it to number 42 and things start to happen. Rosina and Bias over there to run him out of bounds. Didn't really fool anyone on that play. Just had a fake to uh, Galbraith coming up the middle and just dropped it out there to Muncie. Muncie did the rest of it. Atlanta again, John, is showing me the very good pursuit. They get out there on the flanks in a hurry. They play their keys well. They, they do pursue very well, which is a really a, a good uh, thing with most defensive teams do. They read those keys and they pursue and they gang tackle there. 11 3 now second and six. Archie Manning with a play action fake. Got beautiful protection. Going down here for John Gilliam. He and Bias shoulder to shoulder at the 48 yard line. He had the good protection that time, but this Bias has been tough today. Gilliam just has not been able to shake Bias all afternoon. He went down, tried to put an inside move on him, come back to the outside. Let's watch Gilliam down there as he goes down, if he goes down on his pattern. He doesn't seem to put too much effort into it right there. Oh, it's, you know, he doesn't fool anybody, Gary. Bias is right with him all the way. Well, they've worked long and hard this week with Gilliam because their game plan was to throw to him a lot. 10.57 now as a third down and six from the 23-yard line. Manning back, a flag on the play, another flag is thrown, and Manning's going for broke to Don Herman. Ray Brown, and Brown is intercepted. Ray Brown has picked it up. I tell you, that's his second interception of the day. He has four interceptions for the year. We have illegal motion against New Orleans, and you know no. they're going to refuse that. Childs is the tight end who moved on it, so they will take the ball. Let's watch it. Childs moves a little early as Arch is back to throw. He has to move to his right in order to get some room to throw the football, and Herman is just too far downfield. The ball's thrown too high. Ray Brown going up for the football, catching it at his highest point as he's caught. A good catch by Ray Brown. Archie Manning a little disgusted at himself. That for Ray Brown is his second interception of the game. He has four for the year. Dallas. Lady Pittsburgh. Six to nothing in the first period. Should be a good ball game. And Tony Dorsett has scored on a 14-yard run, and that game will follow immediately at the conclusion of this one. Right here on CBS. First down now. Barkowski gets the Woody Thompson. Look at Thompson. He's got a first down at the 40-yard line. He literally ran over Chuck Chris, and I think that's putting it mildly. 14-yard run by Thompson. Let's take a look at it. Watch the outstanding blocking up front. As you see the hole open and form, and uh, Chuck Chris, number 44, gets lowered to boom on by Thompson, who's doing an outstanding job of running the football this afternoon. And Chris is going to have to come out of the ball game. He knocked his one shoulder down around his knee, I believe, when he hit him, Gary. He really popped into him. So Chuck Chris walking off the field now. There he is. Well, this young man's having a very good year for the Saints, and they're already battered and beaten in that secondary. Tom Myers will come in and he's playing with a gimpy knee. They lost Jimmy Stewart, a good man on the special teams in knee surgery. Craig Cassidy's out of the game. He was hurt earlier, so they're being decimated back there. First down at the 40. Get the Haskell stand back and stand back. Goes for five yards. To the 45, Joe Fettersfield making the stop. So Atlanta with that 20 to 14 lead now trying to eat up some time and the ground at the same time. Ball control game is what they want to do right now. They're trying to get it to 946, 945 left and they are controlling the football game. From the 45, second down five. Woody Thompson again. Look at that move. 
Hopkins got a first down to the 45, and Woody Thompson shows some quickness. Clarence Chapman eventually made the stop. But Thompson's hit up the middle, and he's been able to run wide. Jenkins made the key, key block on the side outside as uh, Thompson broke back to the outside, picked up some good yardage in the first down. Woody now, Thompson, 11-yard gain. Now you're seeing what the Atlanta Falcons do best, control that football. With that run, Thompson now has gone over the 100-yard mark. He has 22 carries, 106 yards. He's having a career best today. Markowski on a first down, intended for McCreary, depending on the play, Jim Marsalis. McCreary playing in place of Jim Mitchell, who was evicted from the game earlier. Look at this. Pittsburgh now is taking the lead. 7-6. Get this one. Franco Harris, 61 yards for a touchdown in that game. Woo. Boy, Pittsburgh cannot afford to lose that game. Dallas would not like to lose two in a row. <laughs> It's getting kind of tight, isn't it, as we yeah. go to the 10th week? It sure is, Gary. It's going to be a fine, fine ball game. Don't forget, stay tuned to Pittsburgh-Dallas right after this. Inside the 45-yard line now. Second down, virtually 10. Woody Thompson and Thompson straight up the middle. Look at him go to the 30-yard line. And Woody Thompson has been the story as far as Atlanta is concerned offensively. I tell you what, Scott and Adams have been doing some Tremendous blocking over on that left side of the line. Really controlling the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look at it here as Thompson takes the football. There's a fine block by stand back and he splits the two men over there, runs over another one. That's Chris back in the ball game. I didn't think he wanted to put his head in there twice in a row. Whew. Boy, he knows that number 48 is in the game every time he hits it. At the 30 yard line, first down here, stand back. And Haskell stand back. It's in the 20, bubble the ball. Looks like Atlanta may have recovered their own bobble, and they did. Haskell stand back, fumbling the ball at the 20-yard line. Atlanta's got it. Perkowski's found a weakness on it, the uh, right side of the defensive line and left side offensively speaking, and he certainly is exploiting it this afternoon. Looks like Dave Scott, number 70, who was shaken up earlier in the game, came up with a fumble recovery. He's number 70. So just inside the 20 yard line now, a first down for Atlanta. Look at Woody Thompson's statistics. 120 yards, he had 94 yards two weeks ago. You know, his whole problem has been fumbles. You know, you get some confidence in yourself, John, and you'll forget to fumble. He's, he's starting to come on now. Uh, he's running very, very well this afternoon. He'll be a tired young man this evening. You can bet your life on that. A blitz is on, I give to Thompson again, and Woody Thompson drags people with him. Just short of the 15-yard line, Joe Cuttersfield making the stop. There's been five fumbles in this game by Atlanta, but they've lost only one of them. So now at the 16-yard line, the second down, six yards to go. I don't know how many tackles Chuck Christ has made, but when your safeties have to make the tackles all day long, you know that your defensive line is not doing the job up front. Right now, the Atlanta Falcons have 204 yards rushing in this game. Seven minutes to go. Markowski giving off to stand back. Looked like he had some running room, then Bob Pollard closed down in a hurry. Also Chuck Chris, the guy you mentioned earlier, John. Chuck Chris was up in his blitzing position that time and just, just followed the, uh, the ball, made the tackle. Well, I tell you, a field goal here would be very damaging as far as New Orleans is concerned. And the time getting away. Chris, by the way, has six tackles, four assists in this game. He's also had some meetings with Woody Thompson out there that nobody would like to be involved in. <laughs> Third down, four. Here he comes again on the blitz. Give the stand back. Stand back. Very close to that first down. Did he get it? Ernie Jackson came up to hit him in the vicinity of the 10-yard line. They got to get inside the 10 by about a half yard. And I don't think they did, John. I think it's fourth down. It's hard to tell from up here. We'll have to listen to the officials. The ball's right on the line, the 10-yard line there. Are they going to ask for a measurement or what? Jackson's coming out of the game. He was shaken up on that tackle, taking himself out of Tom Myers, replaces him. It's fourth down. Now, John, what do you do? Do you get greedy? But they're going to go for the field goal. That's a damaging field goal if they could kick it with 6-11 remaining in the game. 
Thus far, Steinford has hit a 31 and a 40 yarder, and this time he's going to attempt a 28 yard field goal. This will be his shortest attempt of the day. Wait a minute now. They stop the clock. Timeout called. New Orleans wants them to think about it. <laughs> a little old psychology used out there to right now, Gary. Gets time for to think about it. Get that hook in it. Someone's probably down there hollering, watch out, you're going to hook it. Look at Steinford. Now, what yeah. do you think he's going through He right doesn't now? want to listen to anyone. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> it's got to be a lonely position Woo! right now. Steinford knows with his field goal, he could really put some icing on the cake. John, let's look ahead now next Sunday. Atlanta's going to go against Tampa Bay. Hawkins would like to continue their drive for that wild card. L.A. and Cleveland. And then that's going to be followed. We're going to have a game you and I are going to be doing. Well, we have Philadelphia and New England, and you and I will be up in uh, Green Bay with the Minnesota Vikings where they try to take on the Green Bay Packers. They lost one today. It'll be a big ball game for them. All right, boy, in the NFC Eastern Division, Dallas and Washington, you know that'll be a good Always one. a tough football game. New Orleans, of course, versus San Francisco next Sunday. Right here, the NFL on CBS. And this is a young man, as they say, as you're getting ready to stand over that putt, you get the peanut butter in your mouth. You can't swallow. Oh, He's, he's got a tough one. He's down there dancing around. Looks like he thinks this one's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> this reminder now, immediately following this game, we'll join Matt Summerall and Tom Brookshire for the Dallas at Pittsburgh game. 7-6 right now, Pittsburgh leading. 28-yard field goal attempt by Steinford at the 5.55 mark. Bad snap! The Pelicans in trouble! Intended for Billy Pritchett. And I don't need to tell you, that is a big break for the New Orleans Saints. Ken McQuilligan, their third-string quarterback, who holds on the snaps, bobbled the ball. You saw the defense leap into the air thinking the ball was to be kicked. And then McQuilligan, who, as we said, as a quarterback, tried to salvage it with a pass to Pritchard. And now the New Orleans Saints have the football. He had the ball right on the money, too, as far as uh, McQuilligan. Watch him get up, throw the pass, and watch... Watch Pritchard. Oh, we don't have that, but he had the football right there in Pritchard's hands. Pritchard could not handle it. So now it's the first and ten, New Orleans Saints. Your car will always need new parts, but you will never need to buy another battery. Once you own the J.C. Penney battery, it never needs water, ever. And it has more power to start your car than any other car battery. So dependable, it's fully warranted for as long as you own your car. If it ever fails, return it. We'll replace it free. Only at J.C. Penney Auto Centers or Catalog Desks. It's the last battery your car will ever need. The Bell System is coming up with communication systems to solve problems in your industry. Whether you're in trucking, retailing, utilities, or any of these others. talk systems with your problem-solving Bell account rep. Your company's missing something. And Hank Strand says, hey, we got a reprieve. We got a chance yet in this football game. After a mishandled snap on a field goal attempt, Hank Strand's team 90 yards away at the 10-yard line, trailing 20 to 14. Let's see what they do. As Archie Manning's got a chance to pull this one out. Manning going to throw on first down, spread it out. Throws, and it's complete. Excellent play to Tony Galbraith. Boy, he laid that one in there, John. I tell you that the uh, linebacker, Pennywell, was right on his man, and he threw that ball right into Galbraith. Pennywell right on the ball. There's nothing he could do to stop that one, Gary. He... Fine reception just drove him out of bounds. Take a look at it right here as, this, as we take a look at the coverage of fake to uh, Muncie. There it comes the throw. Watch Pennywell's right on him. Outstanding. Well, you know, Hank Stram told us last night, John, that Galbraith, just has great hands, and there was a very good example of it. He either had to catch that or pull it out of his belly, one of the two, because <laughs> Archie rifled it in there. Pick up a five, second and five, Herman and Ocean. Manning back to throw, he dumps it off, complete to Galbert, but nothing doing this time. They lost a yard. Jeff Yates, out of Boston College, a former Buffalo Bill was over there. Oh, it comes to a third down. Six yards to go. Good pursuit by Yates as he saw Muncie going out there. Yates just came back behind the line of scrimmage and made the tackle. Outstanding play. 
So Archie Manning now has a tough call coming up. Third down, a long five to go. In the second half, he threw a 13-yard touchdown pass. The Saints scored on a one-yard run by Muncie. They have been in this one. They battled from behind. Third and five, Manning back. That's the time. He's going to run it. He's got the first down. After the 35, he's still on his feet all the way across the 40. Archie Manning to the 42-yard line. I think he's been shaken up on the play. Manning may be hurt. It looks like that ankle that he's had so much trouble with, he is down, and that's too bad. 27-yard scramble by Archie Manning, and the Saints are still alive with 4.39 remaining in the game. Well, Archie Manning means an awful lot to this football team. Let's take a look at the play as we see it from our end zone camera. Pretty good pressure by, no much pressure by the Atlanta Falcons, but they all drop back into coverage. Archie seeing it's open, going for the first down, and then some. Some good running by Archie Manning. He runs right into his own man right there. James Saxon, I believe it is. And then bounces back to the outside. Well, he's coming out of the game. Bobby Douglas, number 10, coming on. Well, he will not get a happy reception, but let's, you know, he's in a difficult situation there replacing Archie. Let's see what he does, Gary. Archie Manning on a third and five, scrambled 27 yards. The ball now to 41 yard line. The clock running just inside four and a half minutes to go. 20 to 14, Atlanta with the lead. Douglas gives to Galbraith, and Galbraith across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Boy, he is quick. Pennywell making the stop again for the Atlanta Falcons. Look again now at Archie Manning. That's the ankle that's kept him out of the lineup for the last four weeks. Boy, you hate to see that, John. Oh, he's a great competitor. Archie's been banged up for the last couple of years. He was looking forward to this year with great enthusiasm. Just too bad that he's had uh, these little crippling injuries that bothered him. Pick up a five, second and five. Bobby Douglas gives off to Galbraith again. Very little on that play, maybe a yard. Jeff Yates has just checked in here, putting a fresh man in that forward wall, made the stop. And here comes number eight. You well, can hear the roar. I'll tell you what, Gary, that could pick them all up now. Archie coming back. You got really have that adrenaline going right now. The momentum has changed a little bit. New Orleans Saints playing very good football right at this point. Third down. About three yards to go. Hottie comes in motion to the near side of the field. Manning gives off. Galbraith very close to that first down. They'll go for it, John, if they don't get it. Well, you have three minutes and five seconds to go. It, it would be a, you'd almost have to go for it in this kind of situation, but uh, who knows what Hank's going to do. Well, they're going to measure. And I'm not going to even guess, but it looks like, now nah, I won't say it. I'll let you guess. You quarterbacks always have better eyes. I believe he's a little bit short. Okay, we'll see. If he is, it'll be a fourth down in inches. Let's look. And you called it. Mr. Unitas, you called it. I can only be half wrong. Huh? All right, here we go. St. Louis, by the way, has taken a 21 to 16 lead over Philadelphia after trailing 16 to nothing in that game. Boy, what a comeback by the Cardinals. We have some exciting football. What do you, what do you call here, Gary? What do you call in this kind of a situation? A first down. Nine out of 10 times, it has to be a quarterback sneak. All you gotta do is fall forward. Here we go. He Fourth might throw down. a touchdown pass. Archie Manning giving off to Muncie. Muncie to the 35. Muncie to the 30. Muncie to the 25. And this crowd is going crazy here in the Superdome. Greg Brasina made the stop on a matter of inches. They get a long first down to the 25-yard line, a 25-yard run. Let's take a look at it. Outstanding blocking up front by the Saints offensive wall. As uh, Mutsi breaks the tackle, Ray Brown almost had him there. He broke the tackle. As you see Mutsi going down the side and looking for some more room to run in. Great call. Brezina 50 and uh, Roland Lars 22 in on a tackle. 91 yards for Muncie. 
That, by the way, is a 16th first down for New Orleans. To date, the Falcons have given up an average of about 13 a game. So the Saints offense has been effective. There's timeout, and there's our score. Introducing the Ford in your future, the new Ford Fairmont. A new car designed for today and the years ahead. Fairmont's mileage ratings are the same as a little VW Rapid when both are equipped with automatic transmission. And this Fairmont, as shown, is actually sticker price less than this Rapid. Yet Fairmont has 90% of the head, leg, and shoulder room of most large cars. Fairmont, roomy but with mileage like a small car and the lowest sticker price in its class. Test drive Fairmont, the newest better idea from Ford. This is the IBM Correcting Selectric Typewriter. Uh-oh. The typewriter that also erases. As slow motion shows, it literally lifts mistakes off the page with the touch of a key. There's no opaquing, no hand erasing, no repositioning the paper. All of which makes it a little easier than ever to be perfect. Thank you, sir. There is Dick Wood, the quarterback coach, Hank Stram, Rich Motti. We just have the two-minute warning here in the Superdome. Excitement. 25-yard line. The Saints have the football. After on a fourth down and inches, Chuck Muncie went 25 yards off the right-hand side. The Saints trailing by six points, 20 to 14. They have been victory starved, and now they're going to try to win one here. It's going to be tough against this Atlanta defense. Archie Manning on delay to Tony Galvin. Down to the 20, 15 to the 12. First down. Now Ortega, Greg Fresina makes the stop, and Galvin and Muncie. Thunder and lightning are really exciting this crowd. Morrison and Sanders on some fine offensive blocking up front. Let's take a look at it right here as we see the draw play to Galbraith as the hole is formed and he picks it well. All the way down to the 12-yard line. That was a 13-yard run by the former Missouri standout. And now just inside the 12-yard line, first down a minute 24. Archie Manning giving off to Muncie, and he's hit for a loss. Big defensive play by Rick Bias. Bias with big plays coming out of his hip pocket today. He had a 74-yard interception for a touchdown, and he'll never make a bigger tackle than that. Gary, that's one of the quickest moves you're going to see by a defensive halfback coming up to play that sweep coming out. Saw the guard pull the end block down, and he was across the line of scrimmage before Muncie got out of tracks. Let's watch it right here. There's the play. You saw Galbraith miss the block as Bias came right past Galbraith to get Muncie for a loss. And now, New Orleans has asked for a timeout. They use it. They have one remaining. The ball at the 17-yard line, a loss of five. That brings up a second and 15, and Manning now discussing the situation with Dick Wood and Hank Stram. Archie Manning coming back after being on the sideline for four weeks and his presence has been felt. Gary, the important thing here is, is the fact that they only have one minute, 11 seconds left to go in this football game. This has to be a touchdown for the, for the Saints. And the, of course, with the one minute, 11 seconds and they have uh, 12 yards to go, that we're gonna see a final score right there, St. Louis 21, Philadelphia 16. Boy, is that a big win for St. Louis. They're now 7-3 and three on the year. The Eagles are 3-7, and seven, and the Eagles are an excellent 3-17. and 17. Well, that's a big win. We have a good ball game right here. And this is a big play coming up for Archie Manning. Second down, 15. The ball back out to the 17-yard line after a 5-yard loss. 20-14. to 14. Atlanta with the lead. Galbraith and now Mike Strawn has come into the backfield for the Saints. In motion is James Faxton. Archie Manning on second and 15. He's got protection. Throwing. Giants. He got it. Touchdown. Henry Giants. It's his seventh touchdown catch of the year. And Hank Stram is up and jumping on Archie Manning. What a play. Take a look at it here as Archie goes back. Childs has beaten by, so Archie just kind of lofts the ball up in the air. Watch the reception. In for the touchdown. He beat Childs, beat right, Rick Bias, Henry Childs, 85. Boy, are they happy. 
That's a 90-yard drive. They started from their own 10-yard line. 20 to 20 to score, a minute five. An important point after. Blanchard to hold, Zaro to attempt it. The kick by Zaro. He got it. There's a flag on the play. It's against Atlanta. So it'll count. And New Orleans has taken a one-point lead. 21 to 20. As the New Orleans Saints, a dramatic come from behind. Inside this new Firestone radial tire is an improved steel cord with five million miles of developmental testing. Where once we used five strands, we now use ten strands of steel. Seven, around two, wrapped by one. A cord construction so important, Firestone named the tire for it. Seven, two, one. The new steel belted radial 721. Now, from Firestone. Archie Manning with his second touchdown pass of the game. A 16-yarder to Childs. Childs now has seven touchdown catches this year, two today. And that ties the record for the club, Garrett. A 90-yard drive, John, <laughs> and 10 plays against what is considered to be one of the top two defenses in the NFC. Well, they have this town on its ear right now. The crowd is going crazy here. And it's been a fine, fantastic football game, even with all the penalties that are being called. So now Zaro will kick off. He just hit a pressure-packed point after. Well, we're going to have to see now what Prokowski can do with one minute and five seconds left in the ball game. Zaro hits one a mile. They're going to let that one hit. They're going to bring it out to the 20-yard line. Zaro didn't get the adrenaline going when he walked back into the football game. Now Atlanta has all three of their timeouts remaining. The ball at the 20-yard line. A minute five remaining. You see it on your screen. 21-20. New Orleans trying to win their third game of the year. Arkowski on the first down. Got beautiful protection. He's throwing down here to Jenkins. Intercepted. Chuck Cliff. And it's Bedlam here in the Superdome. Chuck Chris with his third interception of the year, and John, he has just been outstanding all day long. This the ball was underthrown by Burkowski, which is, uh, and I kind of, you know, don't know whether the question at all. The question was to go for that long bomb the first time, Gary, rather than working the ball down there. But Burkowski certainly has the arm. Well,